Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's our senior now? Woof, woof, woof. Uh, okay. 92 in the house. <laughs> you were Whoa. three. Whoa. Um, Anyway, before we get into tonight's session, uh, we do have a few announcements, beginning with our fantastic sponsors of Campaign 2, uh, and hopefully into infinity, uh, D&D Beyond. Sam. D&D Beyond, everybody, as you know, as all of you already know, uh -huh. before I became an actor, I was a professional ventriloquist. What? Uh, <laughs> So today, oh, I thought Damn I'd it. use my, the skills developed in my former life to do a little bit of an act that I wrote for D&D Beyond. Oh. I'd like you to meet Yandi, the D&D Beyond alpaca. <laughs> I tried to rehearse this bit, but Liam walked in on me, so I stopped. <laughs> so I've never rehearsed this bit before. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Oh, Yandi, <laughs> D&D Beyond is a great company, isn't it? They're very charitable. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is gonna not be good. <laughs> They're very charitable. They're nice to the dregs of society. Oh, why do you say that? <laughs> They're nice to you, aren't they? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Yandi, people think I'm very funny. I think you're a douchebag. <laughs> you apologize right now. Okay, I'm sorry you're a douchebag. <laughs> this gag is already making me sick to my stomach. <laughs> oh yeah, imagine if you had a hand up your ass. <laughs> So I got pages of this stuff, guys. Page of this stuff. Did you look up ventriloquist jokes? No, nope. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Let's just talk about D and D Beyond, okay, Yandi? Okay. People say using D and D Beyond makes you a smarter player. Oh yeah, I use it. Oh, then people must be wrong. <laughs> okay, here a couple more. A couple more. <laughs> Our good best of show flashes. Yanni, 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 Yanni. D and D Beyond helps you do math. Check it out. What's six plus two damage? Seventy-seven. No, that's way too much. One. Uh, that's way too little. You're hard to please. Oh, Yandi, please. You're, you're not making Travis laugh at all. He doesn't find this amusing at all. Oh, I figures. Travis. <laughs> You know how to make Travis laugh on a Thursday night? <laughs> how? <laughs> Tell him a joke on Monday. Because <laughs> he's dumb. <laughs> All right, I've had enough. I really just need to people tell people where to sign up for D&D Beyond. No, what you really need is a breath mint. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Are you sweating? <laughs> I, think, I think I have to go poop. <laughs> All right, guys, sign up today at D&D &D Beyond and report Sam Regal to puppetabuse.org. Thank you, Yandi, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Yandi, so never come back. <laughs> Yandi, never <laughs> come back. There's a lot to unalpaca there. <laughs> oh, Talison, uh, no. Tune in next week when Sam Regal will stick his dick into a wood chipper. <laughs> Man. Oh, this, es this escalation's getting dangerous. Oh my, oh, I just lost, I lost so many votes. You did, you really did. The presidency is in jeopardy. <laughs> you got a week to make it up. Oh. Thank you, Sam. And I'm sorry, D&D &D Beyond. Oh. <laughs> in no. humor, we went there. Oh. Liam O'Brien, for change you can believe in. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, man, I don't, I don't know how to follow that. Um, <laughs> you just I think you do. I think we think come back next, next week. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. That was so bad. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot. I skipped several jokes. Thank, thank you, you merciful, merciful man. <laughs> and you just gained several votes. Well done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we are excited to announce uh, that Critical Role will now be using the official D&D Beyond Twitch extension uh, starting this week. Uh, it, it's, it is now available to view while watching Critical Role live in a browser only, however. Uh, all you have to do is mouse over the screen uh, to see the information from each character. Uh, to get a detailed look at how the extension works, please go to critroll.com for information on how to get that all set up. But it's, uh, it, it has live updates from their 
uh, their devices yep. throughout the show. So uh, mm-hmm. so don't mess it up, guys. Mm-hmm. And don't yell at us <laughs> if we get stuff wrong. No promises. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, keep, yeah. So, guys, the inside, join us. The inside of that alpaca stinks. <laughs> Why did you smell the inside I of the alpaca? Smell my hands. Don't smell your hands. Don't smell your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> Maybe, oh, what does it taste like? What does it taste yeah. like? Maybe you Get can your tongue out. Get your tongue out. Taste the tip of your finger. <laughs> no. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, maybe, you can, uh, maybe you can drink out of its ass at the next live show. <laughs> oh, God. So Travis, yeah. I believe you have an announcement. <laughs> I'm going to be quitting the show. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, wow. Oh. All right. So, guys, we are mere days away from our Kickstarter launch of our very first animated special! Oh my god, three days away. Um, so we thought it'd be cool to share some information about the special with you right now. A little sneak peek. Uh, first, the title. We are calling it The Legend of Vox Machina. Uh, it is in canon, and it takes place before our streaming game started, so all of our characters will be right around level seven. Yeah. And It'll alive. be original, oh. original storyline, and everybody's gonna die. Uh, wait, no, I wasn't supposed to say that part. Um, our big launch is this Monday, March 4th. We are so incredibly humbled by all of the love that you've shown us so far. Everything we've seen on social media is amazing, and you're, you're echoing everything that we've been wanting for the past two and a half years. Uh, and we can't bring this animated adventure, The Legend of Vox Machina, to life without you. So please stay tuned to our social media accounts and our website for more information on the big launch. It's coming on Monday! <laughs> Monday, Monday! I'm a little excited. I have trouble containing myself um, mm. when it comes to animation. Mm. That's awesome. That's Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Thank you. Do you need an alpaca to finish up? I might, I might. Oh. Do you have any other puppet farm animals that you haven't I, abused yet? I don't! <laughs> okay, oh, on that note, <laughs> I think we are thankfully done with our announcements tonight. Um, and with that, I think it's time for us to jump into tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> And welcome back. <laughs> so, last we left off, Mighty Nine had been heading east, absconding from the Empire to pursue the threads that seemed to lead towards the kidnapped husband of Nott in her former life. Gathering your materials, following the signs that this burrowing incursion into Felderwin by the Kryn Dynasty had headed beneath the ground and due east, you went through these tunnels, encountered a few challenges, and then emerged in the eastern wastes of Jorhas. A few conflicts later, almost being hunted down by a rock, you made a friend who was a bugbear and who led you to the city of beasts, Cesarius. There, you took on a few more monstrous forms, visually, 
and began to note the brewing battlements and army that seems to be preparing itself for a future and coming conflict with the Empire against the Ashkeeper Peaks and beyond. You saw what looked to be a possible means of traversing quicker to the east in the way of the, uh, the Moor Bounders. You decided to work out a transaction with uh, Zorth, the goblin purveyor of these, uh, and got a discount by aiding him with what seemed to be some sort of uh, unhappy scenario happening in the caves, uh, the the kind of breeding caves beneath his establishment. There, you did battle with a number of fiendish entities and completed your quest. And upon inquiring about what more information there could be, or at least making a small name for yourself as taskmasters, you were given towards Lady Zethris Olios, one of the the Kreen, uh, apparently more. Uh, official cream within Asarius. The investigators extraordinaire over here, not and Jester, were given two possible tasks of which they could uh, pursue with monetary compensation and or, or possibly favor with and some of the powerful entities, including the Bright Queen, that exist in the capital of Gordranes. And we left off with you leaving the city of Asarius to go ahead and take a break in the wilds and the outskirts of the city. And that's where we go ahead and begin tonight. So, uh, as you guys prepare to rest for the night, is there anything you want to do or prepare or anything in particular, or are we just going to go ahead and take a night's sleep and then pick up in the morning? I don't like the way you said that. It was far too casual. What's on the other side of this, Matt? Tell us now. <laughs> so as you're sleeping. <laughs> 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 Keep watch, right? Yeah, I'll take first watch. I will put up the dome and the silver wire and leave my cat on top of the dome. <coughs> All righty. So, most of you get a rest. Ford, you have first watch. Yep. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me if you Not want. Not a problem. A 13. This All is right. better than it's been. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why are you bringing up old shit? <laughs> All right. First watch, as you begin paying attention to the surrounding darkness of the sunless wastes, Nothing occurs. You are nice and safe. <laughs> you do see the shifting uh, firelight of the dozens of torches being carried through the front lines of this army, and you do see some now moving eastward. Sections of that massive uh, crew of soldiers and war beasts, elements of that seem to be moving east, uh, westward from this position. Okay. Um, but no other issues during your rest, so you complete your evening sleep. And I'll relay it to whoever takes okay. my spot. Whoever's taking next watch? I'll take next. Um, go make a little perception check for me. Yeah? All right. Uh, 11. Okay. As you keep an eye over the surrounding shadows and the faint elements of softened moonlight that seems to punch through elements of the clouds passing overhead and kind of just gently highlight the shapes in the distant horizon across these wastes, Nothing seems to catch your attention, no. though uh, the, the rain has somewhat stopped for the evening, and there's a bit of calm and silence, which is comfortable and preferable for you at this kind of juncture. Yeah. Ford. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, it's been some time, it's been some time. Oh. Wet dreams. Dry, empty plains, flat, open, featureless, an endless horizon of empty earth. Beneath you, something shifts. You look down, your feet standing above a spring, small and trickling, burbling up from the ground below. The waters spew forth and begin to spread rapidly, drowning this endless expanse around you in shifting waves. The, the level of the water comes beyond your nose, and you struggle to try and swim with it, but find your feet anchored to the ground beneath you. The surface escapes you upward, leaving you in freezing depths, fathoms below. Watching. The shadowed shape of an ever-twisting serpent form rides and cages around you in all directions. Return. 
a single massive yellow serpent eye appears before you. Then another. Big and small, your entire periphery becomes dozens and dozens of different sized yellow eyes, single slitted, staring directly at you. Reward. The shaded tendrils of Ugutoa begin to close in around you, binding you in a cocoon of cold, scaled flesh. Wonder. The tendrils knot and flex crushing your body slowly. The pain is immeasurable. Your vision darkens and your body begins bleeding as you feel everything compress the life from you. Punish. Oh, no, oh, no. A final squeeze sends the last breath from your lungs in a muffled scream. You shoot awake, vomiting onto the ground next to you. Caduceus, you see this as suddenly shoots up. You look down, eyes blinking to see foam and briny seawater now slowly soaking into the hard-packed ground. Ford, are you all right? <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, just another, uh, just another dream. Would you uh, characterize this as a positive encouragement or a, um, perhaps a more negative reinforcement? Uh, I think more of the latter. I don't feel like um, my favor with uh, old Ukatoa's <clears throat> as choice as it once was. Why do you think it's angry with you? You remember I told you there were like words that were repeated through these visions? No, but sure. <laughs> right, so. I tell them about the old four words. <laughs> <laughs> Given that, yeah. there were two new words, three maybe. I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch it on VOD. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the gods and goddesses of Twitter will remind you of all those words <laughs> within oh, minutes. If only someone would draw it. Um, <laughs> but it, it it was laced with uh, a, a threat. A threat. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm supposed to be helping it to re be released, right, freed upon the world, and I have decided that that's not the best course of action. And uh, in my dream, it saw fit to crush me. Well, how do you feel now that you're not dreaming anymore? Better. Well, well, that's good. You ever feel like you're not going to wake up from a dream when you're in it? Yeah. I'm worried but about that. Here you are, and I'm sure it could probably, uh, it would put greater strain and stress against you for doing it, for not following its wishes if it could, but it didn't. What if it can? Why hasn't it? I don't know, one thing I am sure of though, it feels stronger, it feels more present, closer. Well, I'm proud of you for maintaining your sense of self through all this. It's difficult sometimes when one is pulled by things greater than ourselves. You, you said you commune with the, the mother, the all. I do. Yeah. Do you, is it a two-way thing, or are you just putting yourself out there and seeing what comes back? Oh, very much a two-way thing. I mean, there's no way nature isn't separate. We're part of it. Uh, we communicate with the world every day with every breath. Everything we do is our declaration of our love, adoration, or our denial of it. Do you think she, uh, do you think she cares about the affairs of something like this? Very much so. Without getting, a doubt, I mean, I'm here. I'm getting the feeling that maybe if I do nothing like any kind of disease, it might just get worse. Maybe I should start thinking about a counter 
agent. Is that what you want? Maybe. Well, I mean, my dreams are one thing, right? But, and I kind of like kick some dirt on the vomit and spittle. That shit is, uh... It looks uncomfortable. It's real. So... Well... I don't know. I think it's worth thinking about. And I think there'll come a day where you really will have to make that choice. Uh, we'll help you with that choice, whatever it ends up being. I do think you're on a path, and I don't necessarily think it's uh, the path of just being a servant to some creature. Uh, I'm very impressed, though. Thanks. I'll uh, I'll cook something if you need to no, no, put I'm that in. That's a, a lot came out of you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'll be fine. I'm just going to crash back out, if you don't mind. No, no problem. <clears throat> oh, God. May have to tell the others in the morning just for safety's sake. Okay. Everybody's going to take care of you. It's going to be all right. I turn over and try to go back to sleep. Okay. The rest of the evening is relatively uneventful. Full night's rest is achieved by the party, as restless as you may have been through most of it, Ford. Um, you all come to consciousness in a colder morning than the one you had, ones you had previously endured out here. Um, it seems in the wake of the recent rains, uh, you can see now the gentle frost that's beginning to coat the nearby horizon and a sprinkle of white shards of ice. Um, as soon as the dome fades, you can see your breath kind of emanate and dissipate into the atmosphere around you with each exhale. You find yourselves bundling up a bit. Can I ask, as the morning comes, uh, am I sore? Is there any bruising or? Checking yourself, there's no physical bruising. There is a bit of soreness, but it seems to be rele relegated directly to like the central abdomen where the yeah. heaving would have come from, but nothing that correlates with the end of your dream. That's good. <clears throat> you can see your breath. <clears throat> it's nice to have something familiar. It's funny. Everyone said that Jorhas was very ugly, but looking out, it kind of looks like a field of diamonds right now. It's, it's glistening, mm. just like in that smut book you gave <gasps> me. Yeah! <sighs> it all comes back to the smut. It's so romantic. Thank you, Caleb. Mm. I know that you have an interest in seafaring, so? Mm -hmm. Did you learn a lot? So much. Mm. <laughs> Name three parts of a boat. <laughs> oh, uh, the port side, the poop deck, <laughs> and the mast. <laughs> you are a silly goose. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay, Ford? You look weird. Yeah, yeah, I didn't sleep very good. <clears throat> uh, uh, wow, everyone's so attentive this morning. You know, nobody needs to get ready or, I don't know, put on Ooh, their... We're in a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> There's room. <laughs> <laughs> the, bubble, the bubble has faded. <laughs> <clears throat> I had, as I've told, Ducey here, another uh, another dream. Oh, a dream? Not wet. It was there was, was there was wet, moisture. Actually. Okay, there it, was a but, lot look, of there a lot. It the was a distinction is wet important. Dream. There's a big puddle right over there from it. I don't. I mean, it, why wouldn't you? Th yes, I had another wet dream. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more of the same or what? Kind of. Um, the previous dreams are more encouraging, like telling me to go forward and help it. This one felt a little more uh, upset. Because you're not in the water? I think because we're not trying to let it out. Right. Yeah. Are you at all nervous what will happen as we proceed towards Well, it's been, a, it's been a while since my last dream. Um, they're not 
super fun. Uh, so if that's you know the regularity in which I have to experience them, I guess I'll just deal with it. Not Do you mean he seemed unhappy? Well, it was the first time <clears throat> that old uh, Demi Snake God killed me at the end. I mean, you don't know that that's necessary. That could you could be that could be something else in your life that is troubling you that you manifested sure, in a stress. dream, right? Yeah. Stress. Are you stressed about anything else? Weaving mm-hmm. itself together with this right. connection you have. Usually, there. usually work stress can can make bad dreams. Are you having any stress at work? And this is our work, right? Yeah. And not not particularly. I mean, other than giant rocks Sometimes and Sometimes when you get a new supervisor or something, that can affect it. Is now that Caleb's in charge, is that affecting affecting your general mood at all? No. Wait, hold, hold on a second, hold on a second, a different topic. Why do you keep doing this? What? I am not in charge of this group. I don't you want should, to be. You should be, you're the clearly, no offense, you're clearly the smartest and possibly the only smart one of us. I, wow. uh, I'm really what? smart, okay? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Super duper smart. Oh, it's right here, okay, just saying. Where are you calling me smart or dumb? What do you think? Your hot on these lines. I keep eating this pebble. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm. I'm oh, not for us. No. Yeah. He spits a couple chunks of tooth. I am good with numbers and with puzzles. Yeah. Uh, Directions, dis- memories. Decision making is a little questionable. I have seen some excellent, excellent decision making. The wall of fire on the boat. Was brilliant, a stroke of tactical genius. Yes, not to answer your question, I think Caleb is a fantastic leader. Also, Bo or Jester, Yasha, Caduceus, almost anyone in the group except you. I think you would make a great leader, not. Thank you, Jester. I appreciate that. But you're wrong, it's Caleb. (laughs) I don't think we have a leader, really. No. There's no, we all have our strengths here. We're all good at certain things. So, you know, it's, we don't need to keep on that tack, you know? We're working together now. I understand, (laughs) and I will leave it alone for now. Aye, aye, Commander. Commander? It feels worse. It feels, feels, feels yeah. Do we have to call you Commander now? Do not Admiral. call me Commander. <laughs> you can call me Admiral uh, Widowgast. Caleb mm. Widowgast is my name. That's actually not your name. <laughs> <laughs> Made up, made up name, made it wow. up on the spot. Oh, no. <laughs> the way that I'm smiling and blushing right now is what Caleb does. Oh. He just walks away from the group to take a breath and not look at anyone in the eye. <laughs> to be fair, some of the smartest people that I know, also terrible leaders. Holla. <laughs> does that mean? <laughs> it's a cultural thing, you yeah, don't understand. <laughs> We got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the new bidet. <laughs> All right, we have a decision to make, and seeing as how our leader has walked away temporarily, let's put this to a, a more democratic vote. <clears throat> we have two options in front of us, sort of two and a half. Mm-hmm. We can either charge across the plains towards finding my kidnapped husband in, in uh, Gordranis. Uh, find him, rescue him, have a happy reunion, all is good. Lots of unknowns in that scenario. Or we have a job offer mm-hmm. from, Multiple. from Lady Zethris to, um, to do some, some work for her in the city, which would give us maybe the financial means that would help us in our journeys ahead. Or a favor. Or a favor, which, fingers crossed, maybe she could just Organize the release of my husband, and, and we don't have to do the second but part. But how would we, how would we tell her that he needs to be released, and not make it like, oh, that's my husband from the Empire? What? <gasps> okay, we're not in the city. No. <laughs> but what would it matter if we earn a favor? I take her at her, her word. She would have to give us a favor, regardless of why we're asking yeah, for does it. Does she seem to place any conditions on this favor? Well, no, but she also, like, you know, 
she's in charge and we're not. She could do whatever she wants. That's true. It's not a very good favor, though, for endangering our lives for her. Well, no, but I mean, if you were like, I'll give you a favor, and then, you know, somebody cashes in and they're like, oh, in order to cash in, you have to, like, psh, cut open your hand and, you know, put it on this thing and maybe do some really horrible blood oath. Would you do that as a favor? I mean, no, right? Or to turn around and walk back to my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you dealing with? What? That's a lot. That like, was a lot. Like bleed into into it's a very specific hypothetical. I'm just <laughs> saying, you know, some people they they do weird things. Yeah. Also, you know, the more time we spend here, the more we kind of assimilate a bit. Maybe we'll get some allies. I mean, if we rush across, right, it could be a bit hasty. We might jeopardize the whole thing. It's yeah. true. Also, we'll probably stick out less if we make a few friends and figure out how this place works. And stopping here, we've already got, you know, some steeds waiting for us if we're well, successful. Take our, we need to do practice, right? Yeah. Right, bound to practice? And then maybe we could ask about Lady Zethris's um, reliability, like her trustworthiness, and if, if people vouch for her, like, oh, she always does her favors, or whatever. Does like she maybe, have a lot of business in Gordrana's? Yeah, so. she connected with the, I don't know. Also, I. Yeah. As that I have not made food this morning, because we're close enough to a town, we should probably grab some food and otherwise, because I'm not, I'm trying to stock up for keeping people healthy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like a, a decent course of action to me. My one concern, not a deal breaker, but um, I feel like we should continue to check in with Not's husband, but I don't know how far exactly we are from him. And I think it is a good idea to try to curry favor and not rush headlong into we don't know what, yeah? But what happens if you check in with him and they're going to take him to the chopping block? I don't know. I mean, have to go what right happens away. then? Well, then oh, we are a very long way away. Then we let our favor be known before we finish the job. But, ha uh, okay, well, she probably has something like sending to, or like somebody that could send a message, like I can send a message, well, maybe like she's, I can send a message to maybe she's person. just Maybe she's just so powerful she can like, boom, teleport us there Oh, or right, something. some people can do that, I forgot. I don't know. I mean, regardless, I feel like we have to gain her trust a little bit first. I don't think we should say anything about your husband until we at least do, well, it seemed like there was like, a job and then a harder job. We kind should of, know what yeah. job. Yeah, we should come up with something other than he's your husband. Okay, okay. Pitch me, pitch yeah. me. Yeah. He's, I'm a goblin and he was my your murdered, servant. Murdered your whole family. You 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 own him. You have a blood debt. Oh, oh, I need to collect. He's yeah. your goblin husband that was reincarnated as this stupid halfling, and you hate halflings. Oh boy, <laughs> this but is a maybe, stretch. <laughs> maybe you could get him back and turn him back into a goblin. I mean, that is a compelling storyline. I mean, if I if I if I had met a character like that, uh, I would fall in love with that character and want to protect it with my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, right. if, what if we are a group of mercenaries who have been sent here to collect this gentleman and bring him back? Well, with, like, that's simpler. <laughs> that's I much like simpler. That. I mean, it's also not that far from the truth. I mean, we know that the, the Green have been pulling a lot of people for experiments. We could just say, not today, we're, Green. We're only invested in saving in saving one man. Yeah, we're only invested in looking for this <laughs> one still thing. Early. It's not like we're, early days. we're not foreign agents or yeah. anything like that. We're not invested in that this fight. A little bit longer. Right. And if I know anything, wars are muddy, they're hazy. They have, people have their um, <sighs> their credos they stick to, but things go go against the grain often enough. People have to live their life in the middle of this. For the right amount of coin or for the right amount of favor, anything can happen, despite a war. And if we prove to be helpful in this small instance, then perhaps she'll understand that we just have our own needs. We haven't used the dodecahedron and the stand together, right? We're assuming that those two things make it even more powerful? Wow. What if we just gave them the stand in exchange for him? Ooh. Wait, what? Maybe Talking that's about a... giving up the tripod for uh, old Yeza. Right, you need them both to be what we are assuming is incredibly 
We're that's all changing. A, that's a plan C or D, right? Exactly, We're just going to yeah. ask for a favor first. Yes, I think so. Yeah, that, that's a backup plan. Yeah, perhaps. I'm just porting it out. Did you just say I'm just fording it out? Sporting it. Oh, because <laughs> please don't use your name as a verb. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'll forge you later for that. <laughs> you will not. <laughs> oh. uh, in the meantime, I think that we should acquire these beasts, get the training we need in case we need to bug out of town as fastly, Agreed. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, do we know what this woman has in mind, or do we need to return? Yes, the two, the two missions were as follows. For 5,000 gold pieces, we must root out an empire spy in the, the, the quad, quad roads, no, oh. four corners, <laughs> wrong, wrong camping. Uh, in the four corners, yeah. and uh, uh, find this empire spy and, and throw him to the wolves. Or for 10,000 gold, or one favor, um, we must find the source of those rifts that we saw, the rift to the fiendish plane, the, the abyss, the abyss, the mm -hmm. abyssal plane, and we must find the source of these rifts and uh, shut it down. Option number two. Go big or go home. Right, we're talking about the favor, which is not an option for the lower amount. It was not an option for the lower Did amount. Did they have any leads or anything to help, uh, or are we just on our own for that? The only lead was for the lower amount, the spy. She gave us a location for the, the rip, corners. the rifts. No, no leads. She given. said that's a good thing that we are such good detectives. She's right. Yeah. Mm. I, mean, I wouldn't mind doing both jobs. I'm kind of curious as to who the spy is, yeah. just kind of in general. I wouldn't <laughs> either, but what if it tugs on, you know, certain party members' heartstrings, right? Like, what if that spy is actually somebody that we're like, oh, that's a good person, and we're going to hand you over for your death? Well, we've we've been presented with two opportunities, and I'm sure that leads will manifest, and we'll follow whatever leads manifest. That Fair will enough. be what we're supposed to move towards. Yeah, we don't have to declare which one it is. We just show up with results, right? Yeah, that's right. And Book if we a. find the person that they are looking for, and it is someone that we do not want to hand over, we do not have to. Yeah. We I mean, we were meant to. who does multiple missions at the same time? Only jackasses would go and take both job options at the same time in one outing, right? Yep. Subcontractor life, I don't, it makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> the gentleman, we did that before. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well yeah, let's go get some breakfast. <clears throat> When is the last time you checked in with the Azar? Remember last night, just before bed? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll allow it. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> I mean, general update? Any sort of markings or have you been, have, where are you? Where the fuck are you? Oh no, what if, okay. I didn't mark my long rest, so that's good. So I'll see how I many spells I have. I just finished my spells together, so also, that's okay. if there is any chance one of these times, even if it is not today, he is alone and feels that he can speak, maybe ask if he knows what they intend for him. Right, yes, I'm going to do that for sure. Okay, do that first. Okay, yes. So what do I do, just go, hey, are you alone, can you speak? Because I need to ask you some questions. Just and assume that he's alone and can speak. Okay, cool. Hi. That was the kickoff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Please say so next. <laughs> or like. Sweetie like um. <laughs> hey guys. I mean. I mean. Oh, Jesus. Favorite <laughs> husbands. Hey, Internet. <laughs> Are there any prominent markings around you? Do you think you'll be alone anytime? Do you know what they have planned for you? Hello. Let's <laughs> 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 you. Yes, his voice comes through quietly and whispered. They're 
keeping me in a dark cell? They're keeping him in a dark cell. Underground somewhere. Underground somewhere. No interrogations yet. No interrogations yet? yet? This is good. But I don't know what they have planned. But he doesn't know what they have planned. Holla back. Did you hear his masculine voice? He's so manly. Yeah, he is. He has the deepest voice in town. Yeah. I could tell. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, that's good. He's alive. He's then uh, no, they haven't roughed him up or they anything. They literally just have him there and they haven't asked him anything. Maybe they're. Yeah. Oh, I should ask if he knows why they took him. Tomorrow morning, I suppose. I can send him again. I did. It. I can call him again. Well, I did want to turn in soon, but sure, yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, one more time. <laughs> hey, Yaza, do you know why they took you? Not misses you so much. Keep those spirits up. Have you heard of the Traveler? Hey! Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I assume it has to do with me helping the assembly. Working with that weird box thing. I don't know who Nod is, but hi. Oh shit. Are you still coming? <laughs> oh no! What would he say? What would he say? Number one, he said he thinks it's because he was working with the assembly. That's why they took him. He's been working with the weird box thing. He was before. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, he doesn't. Wait, box thing. We only saw the tripod where he was. So he. Well, yeah. I'm assuming they took. There's probably more than one of oh, what yeah, we yeah, have. Okay. Okay. We should really see what that thing does, like hooked up to the tripod. I wish so that we curious. could do it in like a pocket dimension or something. Dang, I wish we had the magic fun ball. Um, he said he misses you so much. Okay. And he said that the traveler sounds super duper cool. Hmm. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> As they relay this information the following morning. <laughs> yeah, so last night when oh, I talked to so him, that's, we should probably get going, yeah. Okay. All right, so you gather your things. Um, are you guys taking on the same guises as you did the day before? We should disguise ourselves again. I don't know. I'm going in like myself. Yeah, they didn't. You going in straight forward? Yeah, straight forward, normal forward. It's forward, Alrighty. Yeah. Alrighty. I think I'm gonna go uh, crazy deranged human this time. Better. I don't wanna have to keep, you know, burning people's spells just to walk around. We'll see if it works. Yeah. I kind of flip my cloak on the inside out on the boring side, hide the coat, roll around in the dirt, mess up my hair. All right. Uh, I put some makeup on to actually look goth. Okay. <laughs> but my clothes are still boring me. Okay. Some gotcha. like eyeliner and blackout like a couple teeth. <laughs> Bo look. looks significantly crazed. What about Caleb? What are you doing? Oh, I just repeat uh, yesterday. So I look like a male version of Jester. Not very goth. And I take a bit of tallow and uh, uh, powdered iron and rub it together and I smear it down the side of Beauregard's face. You did what? What is that? What is that? Yeah. What did you just do? You look good. You look good. What did you do? What did you do? I just put some shit on her face. That's bat droppings. That's not bat droppings, it's just iron and wax. <laughs> Would you like some bat droppings? No, I'm um, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I go to the right pocket. <laughs> yeah, it smells a little bit, but it, but, okay. All right, you can mark in your inventory bat droppings. Go for it. Not all my bat droppings. No, just, just some. the significant Not amount. all my bat droppings. <laughs> Saving that for later. Yeah, guano hoarder up in here. All righty. 
Preparing your things, you, be <laughs> <laughs> you begin your hike back towards Asarius. Um, you do notice that it looks like maybe a third of the force that was gathering on the western side of the city has moved on. Um, but it looks like the rest are preparing to move some point in the near future. It looks like a lot more supplies are being uh, put upon their various beasts of burden, the war tor tortoises. Uh, the soldiers are beginning to bring all their arms together, sharpening their weapons, preparing their caches of bolts. Um, there's a general air and energy of preparing to leave. Uh, you don't know how much, how many of them are leaving, how many are staying. We imagine they're probably going to want to have some for defense. Um, but you approach the outer wooden walls, in through the gates once more, the same ogres kind of giving a nod. They kind of give a brief stink eye to both Yasha and Bo as they do. They look at each other, look back at her, and <laughs> stop it, human. It's true. It's not great. Uh, go ahead and make a deception check. Okay. I'm 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 okay. i Escapes them and they or their attention gets drawn elsewhere. Um, but you enter the city streets, um, bustling as you recall. The smell itself strong, especially against kind of the the clean morning cold air. That that heavy waft of just wet animal fur from multiple sources and that long-standing layer of uh, recently returned to mud dung that lines the sides of the mud streets here. Um, you come upon uh, the familiar parts of the city, passing the, the Goblin District, uh, passing by the various other buildings and huts and hovels. Uh, are you heading straight to uh, Zorth's first, or are you we heading should do elsewhere? that. I think we should get that knocked out, yeah. Yeah, out sure. of the way in case we need to leave in a hurry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you approach, you can see from the outside the familiar kind of pin, uh, or pen that is, that is built around it. You hear growling, and two of the goblins are currently holding down uh, the sides of one of the moor bounders, and uh, you can see a third one is coming up and gently trying to feed it. And as it brings its hands up, it kind of like just throws a bunch of chunks of meat on the ground that kind of slam into it and tumble over themselves before they release the creature, and it <laughs> goes in and starts drastically eating and throwing chunks everywhere. The goblins immediately scatter to the edge and close and lock the door behind them on the inside. Um, as you guys enter, the, the slight little bell kind of ding, 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 as you push open the door and you see the familiar uh, older goblin face of Zorth there in the process of gathering what looks to be harnesses and uh, a few uh, somewhat rough looking but functional uh, saddles and turns around and you and goes, Oh, hello, it's good to see you all. Did you sleep well? We did, we did, Zorth. Uh, so well, some of us might have. It might might appear different to you, but it's all it's all of us again. Um, That's a confusing statement, but sure, it's fine. Now come on in. You're here to go ahead and learn how to ride, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. How? What is it? Are these lessons taught by you, or is it? Yeah. All right. Man, we're ready. I want to feel the thunder between my legs. Let's do it. Do, do you not? Do you not need? Um, do you? When riding <laughs> these creatures, do you? Never mind, let's just see this lesson. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, leads you over towards the interior of the pin, and you can see they have, uh, uh, of. there are now five of them inside this pin. Four of them are currently tethered to these heavy, heavy metal stakes that are jammed, who knows how deep in the ground, by their thickness, you can only imagine probably 10 feet or more. Um, and as soon as you begin to approach the edge, you can see them all kind of tense against the chains. And <laughs> good, good deal, good deal. We and bought these? <laughs> <laughs> and there's the, the one that was previously being fed that now has the two uh, leather leash uh, tethers kind of dangling behind it as it's finishing off, like digging into the mud and lifting up what remnants of the meal that was tossed towards it still remain before before it turns around and the rest of you goes. <laughs> You can see now it's it's kind of snubbed snout with the exposed nostrils kind of flaring and expanding as it's taking in the scent of all of you approaching its space. <laughs> and you watch as uh, Azorth approaches and goes, Aye, aye, dump! Take it down, it's all right, they're friends. Shh, brings his toe up, 
<laughs> the front nose mouth. <laughs> um, and it kind of <laughs> comes up, and actually, in a, in a strange display, it seems comparably demure. It doesn't seem to like the other goblins, but Zorth, it seems to come to a trusted position with and kind of <laughs> and kind of sit right next to him. And down! And <laughs> And it plops down, and you can you, the, so the first moment you're like, okay, there is something to this goblin's training. Um, he looks around at you. So, um, we got three of you. Three of you is gonna be learning how to ride these things. Could you please tell me who it's gonna be? Yeah, I wouldn't be the first. Uh, I'll, I'll, all right, that's one. Oh, me and me. What? Two I'll and take one. three. All right. Yeah. So, we're gonna go ahead and bind <laughs> you to your respective creatures. So be ready. B- bind you. <laughs> Who's up first? I am the cat person in this group. <laughs> All right, so for the three of you that are going to be learning, it's going to be a few hours. This is going to be a series. This is, this is essentially an individual for each of you skill challenge. Yeah. It's um, going to require a series of animal handling checks. Um, if there are any spell preparation you would like, you're free to. But into the, uh, oh, oh. the dodeca. Yeah. Bless. Yeah. Bless does not uh, affect it? skill checks. No. Yeah. Shit. That's the dodeca. I, I, will, the dodeca. I will take the dodeca. Who has a low animal handling modifier? I've got a good one. I've got a good one too. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> I am comfortable with cats. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there nothing we can do? I mean, the enhance ability, right? That would be a way to do it. But they don't have that repair. <laughs> then, then it's not going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Caleb, you first. Yeah. So, um,. The first aspect of the training is trust exercises, getting the creature comfortable with you, with your scent, and beginning to kind of see you as an equal or a, a leader or a master of whatever your pact with it is. Yeah. Um, Zorth explains this and a cavalcade of various somewhat obtuse descriptors, but you get the gist of it. Yeah, and uh, while, while he's doing that, uh, Frumpkin, uh, I bring him to my shoulder and I have him start to pee uh, subtly on my shoulders. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And hang out there. All right. Is that familiar urine? Familiar urine? <laughs> yeah, familiar. <laughs> um, so it slowly soaks into the shoulder. Yeah. Zorth kind of gets. Uh, oh, and that you. Um, he, uh, anyway, uh, continues on. Go ahead and make your first animal handling check as you begin to first approach, and yeah. Zorth begins to help you with. Yeah, yeah. Communion Ferrick's with this standby. creature. Ferrick's on standby. Come on, Caleb. Ferrick's on standby. Come on, Caleb. Uh, you boys. got this, Caleb. Good boys all around. Do you hey, hold your books, or kitty, 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 Come kitty, on. Kitty, Show kitty, that pussy who's boss. <laughs> uh, that is an eleven. Eleven. No. All right. It takes a bit of time, and there are a few like, you know, withdrawing of your hands, but then eventually, there is a moment where it, it seems to enable your touch. It begins to like smell you and. Zorth begins to like take the, the the tether with one foot and kind of pull it over and down so its head is below yours and telling you to kind of rub the top of its head, make eye contact, and there's a whole kind of ritual to this that seems to deal with kind of a dominant uh, position over the creature and a point of trust. Um, in a weird way, you gain like, like for as crazy as the instruction of Zorth is, there's there's kind of a, a, new, a new level of respect for this process that this goblin seems to have, have mastered with or trained or on its own. Yeah, that's a good boy. Um, but you do feel that a bond does come with the creature, Good boy. Um, tenuous as it may be. Yeah. Um, now, uh, for the other two, I need you to also go through the same process. Can I ask, I'm as Caleb is standing next to these more, 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 more boundaries, more boundaries. <clears throat> where do they come up to us, like height-wise uh, from their backs? Height-wise, uh, their, their shoulders, which yeah. is the highest point of it, like the whole like sloped front all the way yeah. to the, uh, the rear of the creature. The height, which is the shoulder, would be uh, maybe Almost a foot taller than you. Good. Well, that's how tall what I thought. Are you? Well, like six and change. Whoa. Like, these are big. So I'm, what I'm, the shit? I was like. picturing like I little. did too. Oh, I, I had like I had like, I had like battle cat from He Man in my head. I had the whole. Yeah. No, these are big creatures. Fuck, these are huge. Yeah. I'm pretty tall, though. I'm, uh, okay. yeah. They can vary the ages. Like some of the other ones are a little. Pictures for me. <laughs> yeah. Some some of them are a little smaller. Some of them bigger. You get a sense that there are variations in their age and um, from what little information you you got from the earth before. You know, the ones that survived, survived because they weren't eaten by the others. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're, they're big creatures. That's also why they're expensive and uh, <laughs> utilized as war beasts. 
Yeah. Ooh, that? that's yeah. pretty cool. We got war beasts. Okay. Okay. I was trying to Skeletors was the oh, Panther yeah, one. Panthor. Yeah. Panthor. Oh, Panthor. Yeah. Thank you. It was yeah. fuzzy. That's the first thing that popped so into fuzzy. my head last week was Panthor. Oh, that's Oh, oh. oh. yeah. We you watch here? Watch Nugget. Okay. Nugget, stay in here. As soon as, as soon as Nugget is passed over towards Bo, you see oh the God. four tethered more bounders kind of. Mm. Hey, hey, and hey! Sprinkle. That's not food. Okay. There's more. They can understand me, by the way. They can. Thank you. <laughs> right. girl? Go ahead and make your animal handle. Doctor Doolittle. I'm Doctor Doolittle, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Wow. Hey. That's so bad. But it was 11, like Caleb. 11, okay. Similar process. The, the, the bonding takes a little while, but eventually the, uh, the more bounder that's brought to you, a little bit smaller than the one that Caleb had, but still, you know, probably about six foot at full shoulder height. It's a thing you have to climb onto, really. Wow. Um, seems to come to a point of tenuous trust. He loves me! <laughs> that's <Yeah>. him. <laughs> I know, so I. Strangely, you get the smallest of the three. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to be friends. This is <laughs> like a clown on a tricycle. Uh, 13. 13, it kind of comes up and. Yeah. And like kind of headbutts your palm. Oh. <laughs> hey. So the second portion of this is going to involve being able to give commands and being able to have it kind of beyond just being a beast that, that essentially. Uh, sort of looking for endures your presence. It will actually actively, possibly take some commands. Um, so beginning with you, Caleb. Again, Zorth begins to to show you. You're still working with beasts here. Um, shows you that. All right. So for some of these creatures, you're supposed to, you know, make sure that it, it not only trusts you and respects you, but possibly, given the situation, can also do things for you. <laughs> Come on, try it out! So go ahead and make another animal handling check. Okay. Come on, buddy. I like chicken, I like liver. Meow, mix, meow, <laughs> mix, please deliver. Yeah. 19. 19, all right. Over the next period of time, as the other people start getting ready as well, there gets to be a modicum of, of your voice uh, causing it's like, it doesn't even have like ears that perk up more than it has these kind of skin flaps that cover the side ear holes behind its bulging eyes, and you can see where they twitch and turn, and whenever you begin to make very, very, like just the simple commands of like, jump. Yeah. That's about as far as you get. Maybe down the road there could be other ones, but it begins to kind of like perk up at the sound of your voice, yeah. and you watch as it kind of sits. Good boy. So you can you can offer the commands halt and jump, jump. Yep. Halt. Those are the two that yep. you have. Okay. Capable of. Um, mind you, you still have to make an animal handling check to get them to follow it, but you have the opportunity to do that. You two as well. Same process. You got this, Jesse. Yeah, of course he loves me. So. You're great with animals and people. <sighs> 19. 19. Wow. Following Caleb's oh, lead yeah. quickly enough, yeah. you get yours to also sit next to Caleb's more bounder. Caduce. I'm going to use Thaumaturgy. I'm going to look him in the eye. I'm going to alter my eyes to mirror, mirror his. Just give him a good look over. All right. And uh, 11. 11? You see it kind of look at you over. What, what do you command it to do? Sit. And it licks it beside of your cheek. Oh. It is a. I mean, that'll do. Thick saliva that seems to almost like tingle the outside of your skin, um, but it is not listening to you. Oh, he's 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 so cute. I don't know. <laughs> Hard to be mad at. It. Yeah, I know. For the third and final round, it's just going to refine that process. Caleb, go ahead and make your final animal handling check. Mm. 19. Oh, 19. 19, all right. Um, I'm a cat person. Indeed. And as part of that, whenever you make those commands to it, you get to make the roll with advantage. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. That's what are they doing? Halt and jump. Yep, halt and jump. Okay. Just, just like Red Dead. Just like Red Dead. Hey. Okay, 16. 16. Are you as well managed to go ahead and succeed in this process? Yes. 
Um, while the two of you are with flying colors, all of a sudden you, there's like a, a very, very faint beginnings of a bond with these more bounders. You look over at Caduceus, who's having a little bit of a rough time. I'm having fun. Uh, <laughs> of, of the other two that seem to be a little more hunter, predatory ones, Caduceus got paired with one that seems a little more playful kitten-like. It's the youngest of all of them, which also makes it a little hard for it to pay attention. Go ahead and make your Come on, Caduceus, you got this. <laughs> Uh, 15. 15, that succeeds. Um, so you've earned the ability now to at least give these commands, but you do not gain the advantage uh, as well. If we hadn't gained the commands, would they have just taken off fucking running, <laughs> <laughs> never come back? It, it would have meant that uh, they you you don't know how they act. You could have got them going, but getting them to stop is going to be a very interesting experience. I do, I do, to be fair, have the spell command. So Forward. worst case scenario, yeah. and they, worst case scenario, you have that at your disposal. I can actually give a one word command to mine, and it will it be forced to yes. obey me at least. Boy, you'd never do that to us, right? So if we would have rolled like really well on the first roll, would we have to even do the checks? A cast command. Yeah, it was it was it was a, a growing DC with each check to see how how well you bonded in this first like three hour session with okay. the with the creature. Um, completing it, Zorth kind of looks around at all of you. And, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really impressed. That was that was amazing. No, I've been I've been doing this for a very long time and I haven't seen anyone kind of pull cool that quick. That was incredible. Don't really kind of blown away. No, that was incredible. Yeah. Um, well. I'll go and get my boards. I'll go ahead and get these all suited up and ready to go. And um, so, so uh, what, yeah. what are they called? What are these called? Do they have names? These creatures? That's not my prerogative. They're more bounders. You get to name your beasts. You just bought them. Mm. Which, by the way, where's your coin? Oh yes. Right. Oh yeah. How much was it? Five hundred. So I think it was six hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Right. It was six hundred. Yeah. It was six hundred. It was six hundred. Oh, plus I a thought deck. it was five hundred. That's a that's a good deal. All right. Was it or was it? Six hundred. It was. Six hundred plus a dick. Six hundred and a dick statue. Okay. Which he has. I'm sure. Yes, you've already given the dick statue, which is like sitting on the edge of the table at the front, where you saw him (laughs) handling things. He's very proud of its display. It's it's central to the arrival process. I I, I will. I do want an insight check. Did we actually do better than most people, or is he just being very very nice? Make an insight check. Uh, that's an eighteen. Okay. Okay. I'm into it. I've got D&D it. Beyond, we have the new overlay, guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, because I can't watch this show, because I'm on That's it. Right. We, but built, I we built no, our overlay, so, so it doesn't interact with right. their oh, overlay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. How'd we do? Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, you did great. Didn't much, get it. I have 270, so I don't mind tossing in 100 gold. I could toss in 100. Uh, I can toss. I have uh, uh, these two jade stones. They're worth a hundred each. I'm we'll contribute them. Coin light. I am coin light too. I can put in a hundred. Wow, what's the total? Six hundred. If we need to. So we're at five hundred now. How's Yasha? Coins. How's Yasha look on coin? I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I may have been forgetting to put money in her shit. Uh, nope, no, nope, she's got stuff. Yeah, she can go for fifty, and I'm, we'll both put in fifty. Maybe Yasha should just pay for the whole thing. <laughs> Yasha's good to put down 100 gold. <laughs> Yasha grips the handle of Magician's Judge and looks at you. <laughs> no. All right. So what's the tally here? Two from me. If we each put it, well, well you are you okay to part, part with these jade, jade baubles? Look at this cat. Yeah, but will he take, co- he might only take coin. These you- are worth at least 150 each, but I will give them to you as part of this deal. Reaches the foot out. That's one. Oh, okay, yeah, both of them for you. And kind of hops over to the front desk and pulls out a small eyepiece and kind of looks through and is like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget it's his foot. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, I'll take it. Good. So that's 200, 200 right there. Was that 300? Right there. 300 or 200? 200 Zorth. You said it was, was 150 it? each. 150 each, okay. I'll that's what I said. I thought you said 100 originally. I know that. I'm lying, Matthew. <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Then it is 200, yeah. Or are you going for it? Making I'm lying to this armless goblin. Got you. That makes Not sense. Not to you, because you know everything. Go ahead and make a deception check. Okay. Uh, that is a. Uh, that is a 17. 17. Yeah. These are some pretty nice gems. Not going to lie. Pretty nice, pretty shiny, nice and pretty little bubbles. <laughs> Hundred gold. <laughs> deal, 
deal. So that's two hundred. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll put in a hundred. I'll, I'll put, put in a hundred. I'll put in a hundred. Hundred. Okay. So that's everything. That's everything. That's everything. Yeah. Yeah. I want them now! Go and get them ready to go! Uh, what do uh, these beasts eat? I mean, pretty much whatever you put in front of them that was once living. Oh. Okay. okay. Meats, okay. leathers, jerkies, critters. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. We have to keep them away from the animals, or at least. What about more intelligent fare, you know, like? Someone like me. Yeah, like people. People, like, elves. Like those of us that didn't go through your seminar. Is he gonna eat our faces in the middle of the night? I don't know, as long as you keep them fed. Mm-hmm. If you're not feeding them, maybe not be sleeping near them, if you know what I mean. Well, I see you <laughs> made saddles for them. You got any, uh, like, you know, muzzles? Why? Yeah, why? What a dumb mm. question. I don't know what I was thinking. I take my ribbon uh-huh. off of my horn and go and tie it on the, the collar of mine. Mm-hmm. Or the saddle, so it's pretty. Okay. Uh, so you have your you have your three prepared saddles at the ready. Mm-hmm. You can take them now if you want to nope, bring them no. through the city, or the, they can be held on to until you but wish to take better. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. I walk forward. I place my hand on the neck of my largest beast and say, "I will be back for you later, Yannick." Yannick. Good boy. Yannick. Yannick. All right. Halt. <laughs> What will you say to yours? I will be back for you later, yarn ball. Yarn ball. <laughs> Yannick, yarn ball. Hmm. <laughs> Yandy's already been taken. <laughs> What's the theme? I don't know. <laughs> well, we've got Yannick and yarn ball, but you be you. And Yandy. You be you. Yandy's an alpaca in another dimension. You do you is a good name. <laughs> I'm so confused about the theme. Yep. What was that? Yeah, you're a Clarabelle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yannick, Yarnball, and, and Clarabelle so have cute. been decreed. Thank you. It's my sister. Aww. She's weird, too. <laughs> and you're more bounder after your, your sister. sister. <laughs> Wait, does a... the Moorbounder remind you of your sister, or does your sister remind you of the Moorbounder? I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. That's a good point. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, pick them up when you're ready. We'll All keep right. them until then, but you know, a couple of days later, if you don't show up, I'm going to have to go ahead and assume you're not picking them up in the back of the market. Is there, <laughs> um, is there a place around here that, um, free trade of information, like a pub or a, or a central hub of this? Breakfast. Ah, uh, I mean, your best bit's probably going to the Scowl Square. That's where they've got a lot of um, purveyors of food, and you got the uh, there's 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 one one big old pub there called the Four Corners. That's where Madame Musk is. That's where Timok and you make things. Um, that's where Baron's Meats is. Big old butchery. Mm. <laughs> Madame Wood. Uh. It's not you also wanted to inquire at some point about the character of our employer? Yes, I don't know if... Hey! Hey! <laughs> Zorthy, what's the word on the street about this Lady Zathras Olios? Oh, she's spooky, that one. Spooky like you can't trust her, or spooky like you can trust her and that's a bad thing? No, no, she's just, she's very... <laughs> she's a lot, um... She she's very pretty, she's and she, she's she's surrounded by a lot of people, yeah. are very powerful, and uh, it's just you know don't really go and mingle with them political folk so much for me. So um, does she uh, come down from her tower much? I, I don't see it too often, but then again, I'm usually pretty busy with all these jackasses. <laughs> you see the other goblins are on the corner playing card game, and they, ah, they go back and scramble to go ahead and start <laughs> feeding the rest of the more bounders in the pen. Are a lot of people scared of her? What the? Maybe? What the? Oh. Okay. Hey, man, I have a question. What, what, what is the question? How, have you seen a lot of other places that have like the rifts like you had in your store? Mm. Have you heard of anything, any other goblins talking about, oh man, you should have seen these things that came out of this lit? <laughs> Strange going on. Wow. No! Great. Cool. 
We'll be back to collect our uh, our beasts. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! I'll be here. Thank you so much for your patronage. Fine beasts you've acquired. You'll be really happy. <laughs> we are. Uh, thanks. Mm. Yeah. That could have gone much worse. Ooh. Mm. Good job. I'm proud of you all. Good job. That's so true. Now, Yannick is number two cat. You are number one. You're in charge. You're just dressed to impress, okay? You think okay. Yannick has more, uh, you know, constitution than number one cat? Do you, uh, think, uh, do you think he puffs into glitter when he's punted? <laughs> He does not have no. half the heart as my cat. Thank no, you very much. No. But half the constitution for sure. So, the <coughs> general notes for more bounders, just so you have them. Ooh. This is their, their stat sheet. Yeah. Pass it down. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Do I take a picture? I'm going to put it in my little creature notebook. I, I hate to insist, but oh, can right, we I please get some food? I'm fucking starving. I am hungry. Can we make our way over to the Scowl Square? Certainly. So, uh, continuing on into the center of the town, you pass by the Aurora Hold Tower, where you guys had previously ventured. Um, the guard, you know, well placed. You can see there's a lot of in and out of the facility as different uh, Korean soldiers or generals uh, are in the process of whatever transition is happening to the western side of the city. Um, moving on and kind of asking a few questions, you eventually find yourself at the Scowl Square, and it's. This large uh, kind of cross point where two of, the, two of the major roads seem to meet, and a series of small alleys all kind of come to an asterisk looking center point, a little ways north beyond where the Aurora Hold was. Here in this space, there's uh, kind of a, a center patch of grass, um, like a dull, kind of dark gray green grass, and a singular tree. And around this, you can see there are a number of small uh, tents and tables set up with people that appear to have gathered a number of, of roots or uh, other of the, the hardier plant life that you would see in being harvested outside or in baskets and uh, bags to be sold to whoever's passing by or traded oh. for. Uh, you market. Kind of, farmer's kind of, market. yeah. Cool. Uh, kind of a farmer's market feel, but like on a smaller scale and a very unique uh, variety of <laughs> People making these sales. You see, you see. Uh, what looks to be a a, a a black scaled dragonborn with very broad shoulders and kind of tiny, almost chicken thin legs that is in the process of cutting up some very large but strange looking fish. Apparently, filleting them on a shelf. You can look past that. You can see uh, what looks to be uh, a long piece of almost a laundry. String that's wrapped between two poles and hanging from it are uh, a number of, of small squirrel like creatures that appear to have been hunted and stripped and uh, kind of jerky made of their flesh, uh, as well as bits of fur being put together into a large pelt by a, a small goblin creature. Uh, looks comparable in age to, uh, uh, to uh, Zorth, but uh, female. And it's just with this giant needle knitting all these pelts together uh, and occasionally like. Piercing a finger, not really paying attention, and getting caught halfway through, and having to undo it and oh, unstitch oh. her own finger. Um, you do see what looks like a barn, like this this large L-shaped barn on the north and west side of the square, um, but it has a sign hanging out front that says Four Corners. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a smokestack, kind of a a, a kind of a, a space for a kitchen on the outside left side of the structure. A little bit of smoke coming up. And uh, the door's part way open, and you can see there's a bustling tavern of some kind in the interior. Um, you can, looking around, you probably go ahead and make a perception check for me if you don't mind. Uh, you as well. Uh, 16. 16? Okay. Fucking piece of shit. Eight. Okay. Eight. Nice um, and actually, Jester, you as well. Yay! No! I think it's like a 10. Okay. It's real busy here. Uh, yeah, you, this is just a, a wide variety of different salespeople around here, but, but a lot of it just seems to be general goods scattered around. You do see there are a few places that have at least names attached to them. Some of the huts or some of the, the nearby buildings, those seem to be more prominent businesses here. It's, it's unique. It's Having been in a lot of the central empire Cities. It, this city seems to be trying to build or create a semblance of that same type of civilization 
um, but has a unique roughness to it that is both charmingly rustic and laced with a perpetual sense of danger. Um, you do see there is a craft store that you heard mentioned before um, mm. called uh, Timok and Yud Make Things, is what it's called. Yeah. Tim- Timok, Timok and Yud. Timok and Yud Make, make Things. things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a Etsy store. There is this. Can Eric make a movie? <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a heavy thatched hut that sits on the far eastern side, just beyond where the road stops, kind of tucked between a few buildings in this, this tiny grove uh, where kind of elements of dry reeds seem to be gathering and almost like weaving up into a weird alien ivy that coasts over the outside of this hut. Um, you glance over in that direction, you can see a small banner of cloth that is haphazardly painted that says, uh, Madame Musk's. Uh, you're an interesting Ivy. <laughs> you local? <laughs> Are you hitting on the Ivy Caduceus? Well, I mean, it's just it, this is a surprising plant to find out in the middle here, in the middle of nowhere. Still sounds like he's hitting on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Are you local? So what's bra- to find what you here. brought you here? Been here long. <laughs> Fancy crossing paths. Come with anybody? Like ships in the night. There is also the last. <laughs> As you're trying to understand what they're saying to you, you kind of look past and come into focus. You can also see on the western side of the square uh, one building that is a, a very busy butchery. You can see a, a number of other nondescript creatures. You're uncertain of the origins because they're all mainly been torn of skin and are just kind of hanging sacks of, of meat carcasses that are up on hooks, hanging in what looks to be like a window display. Uh, and there is a what appears to be an, an ogre and a nice silk. Shirt with like ruffle across the the neck and shoulder area that is in the process of just carving through and preparing large slabs of meat. Do any of the hanging carcasses look like the things that we were killed in the basement recently? Ah, uh, you probably have to get a closer look to it. I'm gonna head in that direction. I'm okay. gonna just veer right off that comet to the butcher. Okay, you approach the, there. There's right right in front of you at this space. You can see there is. Uh, one large knoll that is in the process of holding a list and looks like it's in the process <laughs> running errands for possibly other individuals and is kind of growling as they're trying to make out the handwriting and <laughs> speaking in knoll to the uh, ogre who's like, I just wait your turn. <laughs> Finishes up cutting a series of slabs for a, uh, uh, a group of, of three goblins that have like a small cart and they go and pay off uh, the remainder of the slabs and pull them down and put them on the cart and Two of them grab the front uh, parts of the cart, and one jumps in the back and kind of slaps the right one in the shoulder, and then <laughs> the cart begins to wheel off on the southern side of the Sweet square out of sight. Um, the knoll goes up and makes its order. Um, as you're keeping an eye out, go ahead and make a medicine check. 28, natural 20. Whoa! That happened eventually. Um, looking, at, looking at the structure of the various corpses that hang from the front of this establishment, um, None of them match the creature that you had fought the day before. Sure. Um, most of them seem to be either uh, natural, like like oryx that mm. that you had seen, kind of kept as beast of burdens in the area. Um, deer, nothing unusual. Uh, nothing unusual. Um, and a couple of slabs that look to be um, almost a almost a young moorbounder. Um, the meat itself is a little darker and looks a lot tougher. Um, uh, makes yeah. sense. Too early. Uh, the uh, the Knoll's packages are completed and sent off. The uh, ogre sit, the ogre sits back and kind of like takes his hands and puts it in a basin of water and wipes it and kind of looks over at you. He's in a pocket and pulls out a monocle. <laughs> Oh, I want to see someone like you around. What, what, what's, what's this about? <laughs> oh, uh, my apologies. I'm, I'm, I'm not local, and I'm just very impressed by your operation. And honestly, uh, I was uh, just curious what kind of animals that you butcher here. We were uh, kind of uh, on the lookout for some unusual creatures that might have been popping up lately. Uh, things that don't necessarily belong here or should be around here. I mean, it's meat. 
and fabulous meat it is. Where are my What's manners, right? by yeah. the way? I'm so sorry. What was your name again? My name is Baron Visco. Baron Visco. Oh, we It's Baron's heard. Meats. Yeah. Fine establishment you're right here. Uh, because of the natural 20 you rolled, you also notice that while the meats up front look very fresh, there's a smell that kind of catches your nose of rotting meat. I know the smell of rotting meat. Yeah, and you look past beyond it and you can see there's a pile of spoiling meat just like thrown in the, in the far corner. What's that, uh, that pile for back there? Uh, I don't know, there's been, uh, there's been issues. <laughs> oh, what kind of issues, if you don't mind me asking? Well, uh, Recent weeks, all the meat's been spoiling real fast, like. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. Well, that's odd. Having the race prices, you know. If you know anyone who's a hunter, we're paying for meat one gold piece by the pound. Don't mind me asking. You don't. You don't happen to know where that spoiled meat came from, do you? I mean, maybe there's a problem with the water source or something. I. I uh, I've got some talents of my own. Maybe I can help out a bit. If you want to buy it, it's half price. <laughs> but they're all from different sources. Really? Yeah. Are they all the same kind of animal? Or? No, different kinds of animal. Usually they last us a good two weeks, the way we prep them and sold them up. Yeah. Preservatives and all that. Oh, sorry. Puts the monocle back in. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, it's weird. Don't like it, not at all. Well, if I, uh, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Please do, you buying something? Uh, sadly not for myself, but I will be back to buy some for I Oh, come on, put some meat on your bones, you're looking right skinny. He reaches over and like, grabs your arm and kind of tugs it a bit. <laughs> you're a tiny one. Uh, yeah, I'm sadly a, of a monastic tradition that does not allow me to <laughs> consume the flesh of animals, so. What? <laughs> hey, plants. <laughs> Fair, not the first. Hey, you funny. Well, Here, and he cuts off like a little bit and tosses it to you. That's for your troubles. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Really quick. See you soon. I turn around and just going to give it to Knot. Yeah. <laughs> How is it? Mm, it's neat. That's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> that was a that was a good idea, though. Well, uh, I was hoping for a bit more, but the meat's going bad faster than it should, especially if they're salting it. it you, that shouldn't go that quickly. No, it shouldn't. Do you uh, think it's worth checking in with a fish guy? See if fish have the same problem? Yeah. Is that a thing? Let's go over to that black dragonborn over there. Okay. Mosey up to his now. table. All so right. Many puns I'm not making. Carry on. How do? You walk up to the dragonborn, massive shoulders, but you know, skip leg day every time. Um, <laughs> is, <laughs> is sitting there like throwing another fish over the line and putting up there. You can see there's fishing supplies to the side, sweating through the scales. The the eyes themselves are like a like a like a, a very piercing kind of sky blue white iris. Um, glanced over. Uh, yeah, I can help you. Hey, what's you're getting fish? Yeah, yeah, just curious what you had and catch of the day was. Uh, we got blue fish, we got red fish, we got gray fish. Are the gray fish, fish is the bigger fish. Are the fish red, blue, and, red, blue, and gray? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, most, there are elements of the hue in there where you can see that being the distinction he uh -huh. uses. Um, you gather that this person probably isn't a, a, a fishmonger or master of the, the the fish themselves, and has just, just probably somewhere. started a couple months ago catching fish and trying to sell them, and isn't doing a very good job. Well, Ford is uh, keeping him entertained. Now, can I do a scan to see if there's like a similar pile of rotted fish back there that he's having to discard? Uh, maybe pick me up like one, two, two fish. The red, the the, the blue fish. Oh. Twelve. Got on my sis. Oh. That was really that was painful. <laughs> not okay. not not in the vicinity. No. Um, no. Go dog. Go. Uh, the tree that's behind him. Does it look unusual? Medium-sized tree, small tree. Uh, I mean, it tree? looks unusual in the sense that that in the, about a mile surrounding the city, there are no trees. You do right. see them occasionally throughout the uh, you know clusters oh. of them across the fields, but they're pretty this sparse. The dead center, right? And the ones that you yeah, yeah the one the ones that you see cool. are. Um, uh, 
at least for this time of year, leafless or are very hardy kind of swamp type trees that endure uh, very very rough terrain. Is the same true of grass? Is every is it more of a dead landscape around here, or have we seen grasses? You've here? you've seen grasses, but they're usually very thick, like hardy brown gray grasses. Uh, scrub, a lot of scrubland type plant here. Elements of, of what you would imagine in uh, uh, Scottish moors. Kind of, kind of, I would say like, like like Scottish moors meets Joshua tree. Okay. Um, does the tree look uncharacteristically healthy for the climate? No, okay. it, it it looks like it looks healthier than the others, but it's also in the middle of a place where people probably take care of it more than just having to live on its own out in the middle of the space. It doesn't catch you as strange. Tree, tree's not giving off, off any bad vibes. Uh, make a nature check. The tree is the new chair. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the tree? That was one minus one. Tree though. You 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 like oh, a tree. And you smell the meat in your fingers, and it completely distracts you, and you lose sight of it. So talking mm. salt. Yeah, fish. Want to go to? I'm uh, so fucking hungry. I want to try uh, out this Timok and Yude place, but excuse me, do you? Um, yeah. Do you know uh, where do these fish come in from? Are they uh, river? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I got and headed the off off off, off alone, that way to the west, mm. and uh, you cross that river. Off alone. Mm. Mm. Off yeah. alone river. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Have any problem with rotting fish? I give him a little crazy eye and go with my look. He looks down at you. He's a good like foot taller than you. Yeah. The snout kind of per kind of puckers up a bit. She's going bad. A little too quick. Uh, maybe I don't know. I, I'll, I'll sell a lot of them really quick. I wouldn't know. Hmm. Yeah. No. no yeah. No. Let's get the fuck Sorry. out of here. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Good luck with your haul. <clears throat> Gonna buy anything? Nope. Oh, fuck you too! <laughs> and you get the sense, this guy, not a good salesman. No. <laughs> Probably not doing too well. Something that guy worked at Brookstone. <laughs> Madam Musk. Make it hard. Yeah. Madam, Madam Musk. Musk. Oh. Okay, what does she do? <laughs> she makes Musk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, you head to the, to the hut. Trying it all. All right then. Okay, okay. so. <laughs> you build it, we're going. <laughs> We're not going to buy uh, anything. Lesson I should learn. <laughs> just uh, go insult you and leave. That's, you you know, that's, why, that's why I show up every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so as you approach the outside of the hut, um, you can see that that interesting ivy that's kind of climbing over it, creating this unique net-like lattice of uh, the, a very jagged-looking ivy. It's almost like miniature brambles that twist and knot over each other. It's, it's weirdly beautiful, but also a, a very no-touch scenario. Um, but as you approach the front of it, you can see there's uh, a, a cord hanging across the, the entryway and a curtain that is split in the center of kind of a, what would have been a bright purple at one time, but the colors faded over how long it's been here, and now it's just kind of this purplish gray, tattered at the bottom, kind of soaked into this dark brown mud that's kind of set within the base of it. Um, you already, the smell hits you, and it's very strong medicinal mm. uh, herbs, uh, ground roots and powders, and as soon as you kind of step through the cloth, the interior is, and this is this is actually, uh, for you, kind of a welcome site. Um, as there's a lot of things here that, that can be treated like teas. <laughs> um, but there are all sorts of, of bulbs and, and roots and, and, and dried vegetable matter that seems to have been, you know, pulled out in strings and then Woven together into long uh, braids that are dangling, you can see uh, cages that hang in areas with moss-covered, shelled creatures that are kind of slowly shifting in their spaces. And in the center, there is a wicker chair. Um, and in that wicker chair, you see a cloaked figure with a a, a big hood that completely obscures the face. And you see what looks to be two tiny clawed hands that have kind of like a red-brown scale across the top of them that just sits in there with two tiny legs. It's weird, like there's a giant head and torso. And he's like tiny little hands and tiny little legs. It's very creepy. It's almost like a like a like an old woman with baby proportions. It's upsetting when you approach. Can you see the face? Do you fortune teller? No, the hood the hood is covering the face. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, hello, grandmother. You've come to talk to Madam Mars. Oh, fuck this, let's go. I'm yes, so yes, 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 we, we have, have, yes, we have, we definitely have. Oh, what you looking for? Well, we're 
kind of begins rocking in this wicker chair. Oh. I'm fucking out. Oh, I turn around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else take over. You, uh, grandmother, grandmother, do you know much of this city? I don't wonder it often, but I do know the land. I don't like it. Hmm. Oh boy. Do you have fortunes? No. But I make potions. Oh, what kind of potions do you make? Salves, bows. I like bombs. Whatever ails you. <laughs> no, um, nothing ails us currently, but that changes frequently. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I love her so much. Well, uh, we are very interested in this, of course. What have you, what are your wares? Yeah, I'm standing in the corner of my head, my arm going, after healing potions! We have You're healing in the potions. corner in Blair Witch. Yeah, I want yeah. more! <laughs> Raise your hand if you want off the ride. We, we have the ability to heal wounds, but uh, is there any other condition that your potions can restore? I have prepared a few antivenoms. <laughs> Antivenom. Oh, that might be useful. Is that, in, is that important around these parts? Might be. I don't know. I don't travel too far. This is terrible. What about? Um, was she Christian? How long have you been here? Uh, as long as the elements have had me. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, you, you said you've recently <clears throat> made, uh, you've recently made anti-venom potions? One of the hands potions. comes up oh, and God. points Don't. over, and you see there's a small shelf to the side, uh, with doors locked, and, um... In there. Uh -huh. I'll keep them. Okay. Kill this one. Did you, um, <laughs> did you recently make them uh -oh. due to... <laughs> A, an influx of poison. Yes, an influx of venomous things coming towards to you that you could do that. Is that why they're? I'm so nervous. She's freaking me out for. Yeah, yeah, She's freaking me out. Point blank. I I take a few steps back and I just you know. Gesture wildly. To <laughs> That's my name. I just like to be prepared. Uh -huh. That's all. Yeah, I'm, sure I'm like do. ducking down. I really want to try to get a look. What do you do accept check. as payment? Gold or treat? Not souls or faces? No. Are you offering? Don't. First off, she's lying. Sadly, he has neither. 22. 22. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be an oh actual boy. baby. Oh, now, stay man. tuned for Monday's Kickstarter launch. Boy, howdy. The oh, Legend man. of Vox Machina animated special. It's going to be amazing. I'm just going to point out it's another chair. I feel they're connected. Um, <laughs> I mean, this, this woman's chair, the wicker well, chair? We, we've yeah. had wooden chair. This is now the, the, the order the of the wicker, wicker, wicker chair. What's what's one we're step? Find no, we're find find uh, no, that will be the Society of the boy. Stool. Uh huh. Uh, this is a Vox Machina, not a single character <laughs> with tiny <laughs> hands. <laughs> what? What? What is it? We cannot guarantee that, Liam. <laughs> what? She's. Are you looking to pay? Well, is it just the anti-venom, or, or do you have any other wares for sale? I do have another healing potion, but I can't make more because I'm out of tumor moss. Tu tumor, tumor moss? moss? Tumor moss. You need two mimosas. That's the biggest throwback yet. Two mimosas. Two mimosas. Two mimosas. Two mimosas. I usually have to send the booyah to get it for me, but. The local patches are dried up, so. Oh, yes, this is the this farmlands is have been. Yeah. The farmlands and the um, livestock have been uh, affected by something. Yeah. Do you I know, know a place where there is some, <laughs> if you want to get it for me, like a nice golden. This is yeah, the weirdest production of the I Secret Garden ever. <laughs> I definitely think we should get some for you. Um, what? Uh, where, where do you know that there's tumor moss that still grows? The hand kind of picks up and points over behind the right shoulder and says, 
there's a small cove <laughs> along the eastern bank of the Eiffel on River. Surrounded by seven trees, this grove is, this small bank. There, there you'll find the strongest batch of tumour must this side <laughs> of sure has. Oh, what sheet music of that! <laughs> <laughs> If I had a fine white horse, I'd take it for a ride today. <laughs> oh, 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 how much, how much okay. for the anti-venom stuff that you have made? I have four prepared. Fifty gold apiece. Yes. Oh? Yeah, I'll buy all four of them. How do you have that much money after we just spent money on them? I'll take it, I'll just throw 200 gold at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you've made a mess. I'll, 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 I'll pick I'll, it up and it put it yeah. in her tiny dog. I've got it! Oh. But thank you. Grandmother. We have heard uh, rumors about it. Kind of shifts in your direction. <laughs> My, my parents told me stories about things like this. Mm. Grandmother, uh, we have heard rumors in this city of um, a strange presence. I understand you are in this home much of the time, but have you heard any rumors about anything uh, um, otherworldly in a way you are not familiar with here? Go ahead and make a persuasion check. The dodecahedron, if you need it. Oh, no. It didn't help. Fourteen. Fourteen, okay. I've heard rumors of folks dealing with bad dreams. Round the square here. Oh, the square. Sleepless nights. Old Portis. Apparently, when crazy and murdered his family. Portis. 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 You. Where did uh, old Portis used to live? Hmm? He used to live far down that side of the square. And points out, kind of directly behind you, on what would be the western road that leads away from the square. Hmm. But he's not there anymore. He was executed but two days ago. Did they board up his house or anything? I don't know. I don't leave this hurt. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How did they kill him? I don't leave this hurt. We should go check out his house. How do you uh, I'm going sustain forward. yourself? I have my ways. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> well, Thank you. Yeah. You seem yeah. uncomfortable. Would you like to wait outside? I'd Thank just like sir. to ask what the name. If I were to look up under equipment, are these four vials of poison resistance <laughs> called? No. I'll show you the break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring me to Mimosa, I can make you more healing potion. At the massive discount, The head slowly nods in your direction, kind of twitches a bit. Ooh. Just for fun, I'm going to detect uh, undead just to see. Okay. And can I do an insight check? Kill this bitch. I want to do an insight check when she said she'll trade in fate or whatever if, if she was joking. Trade in? He was like, would you, to, would you trade in fate or, oh, or right, right. Yeah. fortunes? Ahead, and she was like, are you offering? Go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Uh, you, um, you I have 60 feet. Right. Uh, you concentrate and focus to sense that kind of that 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 negative void aura that seems to emanate from creatures that are held together through necromancy. Uh, nothing. Uh, Nineteen total. 
So many whispers tonight. So many whispers. Each whisper is an opportunity, a whispertunity. A whispertunity. To tell you about the awesome merch that's in the Critical Role shop. I don't know. Ow. Hey, we got some shirts. Like the one that Travis Willingham's wearing. Oh, it's mm -hmm. such a oh good shirt. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. yeah. Hey, guess That's what? That's a lady small. Actually, I don't know if it's true. <laughs> so I think it's true. Mm -hmm. the There's a Traveler bumper sticker. It might be in the universe, I'm not sure. Hey, terrible. that is a, maybe a good plug. <laughs> did, you, did you find it? Yeah? No? Did you get the vibe? No, no, no vibe. Everything's copacetic. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's go check out that house. Yes. I yeah. think that's a good lead. I Fair enough. Agree. It's a pretty good lead. It's be safe out there. Can just kill her? <laughs> Nobody's gonna come in here. Be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. As we're all leaving. Can we see her face? As we're Make leaving, I'm gonna kneel down and say, you're doing such a good job. Like, it's so, so creepy. I'm so impressed with you guys. And I... <laughs> Natural 18 for a 19. Okay. Um... You notice, uh, I'll, I'll put this out since this, you don't get, get too much detail, but there's something odd about it, the physicality of this woman. The, the body seems to move in sections, like it's a, like it's a, like it's a, a, a person poorly made and about to fall apart. It's, it's off-putting and strange. You get, you get a glance underneath when, when Jester's talking to her, like the head kind of shoots up towards her in a second. And you see what looks to be like a snout of some kind, but it's a small, long snout. Like for the size of the hood, you see this tiny little snout poke through and then pull back in, and the whole body seems to like recoil into the chair a bit and get still. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Shh. All right, go now, please. <laughs> we should go. Wow. You guys exit Madame Musk's tent. This oh is my so god. Weird. As soon as we exit, I turn around. Is it still there? No. As you turn around, it's still there. <laughs> Can we please eat or go check out the boarded up house? One or the other. Just whatever direction is further away from this fucking place. Oh my god. So many mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're starving. All right, the house. The, the house. house. The house. Yeah, so it felt like that was like. Several people, right? Well, you said I you don't guys. know what you're talking well, about. You Madame Musk was so super people. creepy and she, stuff. You said you guys are doing a great job. No, I didn't. I'm sure of it. Um, you guys? They were really cute, though. Who? The kobolds. There were kobolds? Yeah! Wait, there was kobolds under there? She wants to be creepy, okay? Let her be creepy. I don't know what's happening. You're saying that was just a bunch of kobolds? Shh. And it was an act? Shh. Those type of creepy people, they're always acts. That's how, they're scammers. That's how they make their living. She was amazing. Very, very impressed. eloquent compared to our past experience with. Okay. Didn't fool me. I was totally comfortable You're in there. You're scared out of your PGBs. Yeah, by just a couple of kobolds and a little cloak. I'm not even going to dignify that you. with an inside don't check. Big man! Just the whole business off of it, don't Can't say Can't even anything. take three kobolds in a trench keep, coat. Keep pushing me, not Keep pushing me. <laughs> See what happens. Oh, I know how to get you. <laughs> Go put a, a blanket over my head and get some sticks. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So we are going to go check out this murderer's down on the left. Old this crazy Potus. Yes, Potus. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. We look for the the house on the left. Yeah, okay. The house you, at the end of the road. Murder house. Okay. So you head west, back through the um, uh, the square, passing the four corners on the right, and the uh, uh, Baron Visco's butchery to the left. Uh, going four houses down to the left, you can see what's a, a small home, uh, maybe three rooms total. Uh, some of it's kind of, the wood's warped and the building itself kind of leans a little bit to the right, but it's closed up. Is there, a, does it look like there's locks or barricades or like or police line gaps. do not cross there, there's tape? There's not a police line, but it does appear to be locked. Does it look lived in still or does it look closed? Mm -hmm. Make an investigation check. Chimneys, Good, holes, gaps big enough for a cat. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a four. Kind of look at the house and four walls, roof. I'm just gonna pick the lock. Yeah, well, we just I pick the door so down, windows. Yeah. I'm gonna pick just the lock. Go ahead and go ahead and make a, a D20 check. Is anybody your watching? Modifier and Yasha Yasha will, I want to uh, look and make sure 26. nobody's watching when yeah, that does Yasha that. Yasha will provide a meat shield barrier. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people walking through this, <laughs> this street, and you're going to the front door to pick it. Is yeah. there a back? To, I, I want to do a little yeah, scout thank around. You, do that. It's too late. <laughs> while, while, while Nott's working on okay. it, I want to scout the. Uh, there is no back door. It's small enough to the point where there's really only one entrance and exit. Um, Windows. Uh, there is one window in the back, but it's, board, it's boarded shut. I kind of pull on the boards a little bit. Do they seem like they're in there? Uh, I mean, they're they're recently nailed, so it's not they're not they're not weathered and, and losing their strength. Right. But they I mean they're boards. They can be broken or pushed in with enough force. Okay. How are you doing, Nod? Almost done. The 26. 26. <laughs> Door opens up. I do a scan. Anyone watching us? Make a perception check. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to do it too. You did as well. Yeah, well, that's a natural one. So I'm distracted. 24. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 25. Oh, no. Easy, guys. So, uh,. There's like a couple of folks that are kind of looking over, strangely, as not picks and opens the door, and they're just like, "Want to create a diversion or something?" While we it's go, a, we left. It's our house that we left stuff in there. So see, there's this kind of rough and tumble-looking hobgoblin, uh, red skin, kind of a pointed nose, dark hair that kind of tumbles past the kind of the ears that point backwards, and this kind of big square jaw kind of approaches. Goes, I, I, well, what's, um, what's the business? You want to buy The Portis owed us some money. We were just going to go collect some of his furniture to repay the debt. Make a deception check. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That's a deception? Ooh, yeah. Negative three. Fifteen. Oh, with a fifteen. Oh. With a oh. All right, makes sense. <laughs> oh. Just turns around and walks around, which nice. was more just like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't seem to be too inquisitive. Once you said that, it's like, oh, I get it. And just yeah, walked away. Very impressive. Yeah, what is wrong with people here? Outside sentry, and we'll all go in the house real fast. Take a look. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll pop in the house. Yeah, I pop in as well. You walk inside. Uh, it's very lightly furnished, um, and kind of sets a theme for probably how a lot of this city is. There is a simple table with a couple of chairs. You can see another. What looks like a table that's used for dining mostly, and. Um, smaller chairs. This looks like maybe a family lived here. Um, but what you do notice is the floor around the dining table to the left and near the entranceway that goes into what might have been a bedroom is just puddles of dried blood. Oh. Mm. Any rifts to the abyss? <laughs> Make a perception check. <laughs> perception? One story, right? Not two stories? One story, yeah. Twelve. Uh, don't see anything. To that kind of I'm going to head towards the bedroom where the where the blood stain seems to be coming from. Take a look around. I'm also looking to see if there's a basement a of any kind. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for a basement. You said? Oh, that too. Just investigation check. Oh I'll God, had to be an investigation. Someone who has left blood before. I want to will gram this room and see if I can yeah. ascertain how this happened. Investigation check as well. And yeah. can I look for any loose floorboards, papers, places that people might hide scrawlings? <sighs> Hidden, yeah. hidden, no, hidden compartments. Sure, make an investigation check. Can we see, like, what does it look like where the blood came from? Like, where were the bodies? Uh, that, that, that's kind of what an investigation check would allow. Um, oh, yeah. So you rolled a what? A six. You're hmm, just kind of escaping your yeah, peripheral. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, not too bad. So uh, looking around the the bedroom, you can see where it looks like there was probably one one death on the bed itself. Um, it looks like the splash, the, the splatter patterns across the ground was there was some sort of a struggle, um, and there are two other smaller puddles where you can see what looks to be three bodies eventually laid to rest and bled out. So there were three deaths here, um, one large on the bed, and then two smaller ones in the dining area. Hmm. Anything in the closet? I'm just going to check There's all the no rooms. No closet. There, there is a. There are drawers and stuff where the place has already been stripped clean. Does it look like they were killed and put in a place, or does it look like they were killed and just fell? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, really. 
I'm going to sit on the floor and pull out uh, my spell book and slap it down and, and take the time to cast Detect Magic as a ritual. Okay, and what were you doing? 23 to look for loose floorboards, places Basements, that... Basements, shelves, like that. Okay. Yeah, hidden, hidden, hidden shell, shit. shell okay. shit. Uh, you, you look shit. around. Feeling, feeling under desks. Yeah, it, doing uh, the mo- most of the ground in here is uh, not wooden boards, more than it's just stones that have been placed in the mud and then gone over with a bit of masonry to go ahead and seal it. Um, so there's no loose boards, but you do feel around. It was a very good check, but there, you, you feel certain that there is no hidden compartment or a basement or anything beyond this. It is a simple abode. Simple abode. So at least you confirm for yourself that there isn't something you're missing as far as the, the structure itself. All right. Don't who? Yeah. Detecting magic? Caleb still it takes right. a little bit. He's take a little bit, you floor. cast Detect Magic. Yeah. Ten minutes later. Nothing. The house seems pretty pretty abandoned, cleaned out, and whatever remnants of these murders took place, the uh, this this individual, this old POTUS you heard about, was apparently did this and was executed a couple days ago. Oh, can we go eat? <laughs> uh, I'd burn oh, yeah. an, uh, another spell slot to return myself to looking like Jester as a boy. Okay. All right, let's go eat. Maybe we can ask around at the Pub yeah. or whatever the whatever. tavern. Who cares? We don't know where Potus worked or something. Maybe he was exposed to something. Well, it's, it seems like that a lot of people have been exposed to this crazy making right? miasma. Well, like, maybe he woke up from a bad dream and killed everyone. Maybe he ate some bad meat. Maybe Ford, oh my gosh. What if in your bad dream, sometime you're going to wake up and murder all of us when we're in our bubble hut? You know when I am going to murder all of you is in five minutes. We don't fucking eat we're something. We're going there right now. We're walking there Walk for. Walk faster. Yeah, he was publicly executed, so we should just uh, gossip with the locals to find out why. We'll go gossip. Yeah. Okay. To the barn. To the four corners. All right, you guys head back out into the Main thoroughfare over to the Four Corners Tavern. As you approach, you can already see there. Oh, sorry, you read something? Uh, is Timok and Yud on their way out? No, they would be on the southeastern side. Maybe later. Um, but as you approach, you can see there are two figures. One is a, a large, burly orc, and another that appears to be a bugbear are dragging a body out from the front. What? From the front of where? Of the from, Four from, Corners? From inside of the Four Corners, and they're dragging it's it out into the street. Like a and they, dead body, or? It's, it's a limp body. Um, and in just a second, you could see it's another orc. Too much to drink that one. They th- you hear a chuckle, <laughs> and they throw it to the ground, and one of them kind of just slaps it in the face, and you can see the orc on the ground's face is just hamburger meat. Just It is it is bloodied, and the oh. lip is split, and one of the eyes is swollen shut, and there's like spatters of his own blood across the chest, and uh, they both kind of sit there and look at him, and it's like, hey, poor bastard. <laughs> Kick him in the side. <laughs> Wake up! And he goes and takes a, a tanker that, that the bugbear was holding the other hand and pours it over his face. And the orc on the ground goes like, <laughs> "Don't win!" Like, oh. pay us off. We lost money on you. And they just walk back inside and leave the orc there on the ground, kind of dazed. And you hear there's chatter and discussion and conversation and chuckles and guttural voices and high pitched voices and. Whiny laughter and faint, discordant music, all emanating from the open doorway to the four corners as you step within. And we're going to go and take a break. All right, so we'll return here in a few minutes, guys. We do have our fantastic Wormwood giveaway from our friends at Wormwood. Wormwood! Which, if you haven't seen it yet, there's a video on social media of them, how they made this DM screen. And it's like, like you see, you see the stuff they make and you're like, that's really cool. You see the quality of in person, you're like that's really well done. Yeah. You see the actual process, and like I'm still kind of blown Staggering. away by it. So, so check it out if you can. It's so relaxing yeah, um, to watch. Yeah. Tonight is the Purple Heart dice yeah. tray, made famous yeah. by our yeah. fantastic Scanlan Short Hall from the last campaign. Keep my colored. Yes, one lucky winner gets this when we return. Uh, okay. To enter, go ahead and uh, in the critical role chat enter the term Minotaur. M I N O T A U R. Minotaur. Right. Once, more than once, and you'll be disqualified. Uh, once again, uh, this is for US, Canada, except for Quebec. Um, we will have a winner when we return here in a few minutes. So we'll see you guys in a second. Or Quebec. Got perfect war. 
warlock Her weapons and supplies But you need a place to track your stuff Cause you're so disorganized You click open the web page You heard about a critical role And now you're ready to kick some butt In that mine shop full of no that i think it worked you were right pumat number three all we had to do was invoke that subscription can trip pumat, pumat number three? Oh boy uh well hello there i'm pumat prime it's good to finally join you here in the prime dimension uh i see this is the, the twitch prime realm i think and uh oh we're on the critical role channel aren't we well but you look at that, you got chat and everything. <laughs> Respectfully, I was uh, looking for the prime rib realm, but uh, yeah, this isn't too bad. You see, if you already have access to the Amazon prime realm, you can get a free subscription to the channel of your choice in the Twitch prime realm. The two realms have a pretty good working relationship after that peace treaty the prime minister signed a few years back. You just have to remember to renew your Twitch Prime subscription at the top of each month, respectfully. And, uh, hey, if you're already a subscriber, you can spread the joy by gifting a subscription using the Gift a Sub button. That is, uh, assuming the Empire hasn't sent a tax man to your shop here recently. <laughs> All right, well, uh, off to find that darn elusive uh, Prime Rib Realm. Who knew the Prime Dimension had so many pockets? Good luck. <laughs> Subscribe. Resubscribe. Brian Foster is not a cabbage. Last time on Yeehaw Game Ranch. Maybe since. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? I just got off my horse. What are you do? Did you send Gary running? I punched the horse. Did you punch Gary? Yeah, yeah. Dude. Um, can I slide down this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Don't you dot. What's your horse's name? Big Wanger. Yeah. Henry will get that. Yep. If we ride our horses side by side. Yep. I wonder if we can jump, jump onto each other's. I bet so. I Look wanna... how slathered I am. Why are you soaking wet? Because I was working hard. Like at what? That race? Yeah. You are buttered up nah. and ready for Thursday night action, yep. baby. Okay, dude. What? You. That one is going to be so disgusting by the time it's not like Henry it makes it into your mouth. No, but this is raw animal fur. It hit my ubula. Travis Willingham's Yeehaw Game Ranch. Yeehaw! Previously on Ming Drop. You, the brave, the chosen, must use your wisdom and strength to save our world. This Quiz is... and dragon. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we're doing the dragon. Okay, I was really oh, into we went a wolf. From one green dragon in one game to the green dragon, dragon in the other. Seven points. We can do this. So you've made it this far. But if you can answer my questions, I'll char you to the bone. Ooh. You don't breathe fire! Um, it's poison. Poppery. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Poppery. I mean, <laughs> dried we, flowers. We know so, so much about it. it. Which of the following is not featured on the Great Seal of the United States? Mmm. Uh, 13 birds. God damn it. I totally knew that. Wow. No, I that was like, What profession was Charles Atlas in? Bodybuilding. Anybody oh. who went to the Rocky oh, Atlas, Horror. Of course, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. It's Rocky Horror shit right there. You, yeah. The only reason I know that. What is the sign of the zodiac? Is known as Taurus. I didn't even finish the question. Okay. Are we waiting for you to finish no, reading from now on? Because I can't. No, no, we're not waiting. I can. We're not right. waiting. It's my own fault. It breaks through the Empire State Building. Uh, ten million. <laughs> I guess Good I was fun. didn't really know that. 
this January's birthstone. I should know this. Darn it. My birthday's in January. This is gonna, obviously rigged. I'm just going to sit back. It's obviously rigged. I'm just going to let Question you do six. <laughs> that was O'Hare Reporter's Day, which is the second busiest. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth. No! <laughs> this is revenge for Soul Calibur. <laughs> it's revenge for Soul Calibur. Oh, man, it? I'm feeling it. There's a McDonald's hamburger store. Passed out of California. Go! <laughs> We're playing Street Fighter after this. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> This this was like this dragon. This dragon was like is apparently my bro. Apparently, because that was so leaning in my direction yep. there. That was hard. Yep. <laughs>
And welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Before we jump back in, we do have a winner tonight. The winner is <clears throat> three into seven twenty. Three and three, like number three and seven twenty. Congratulations. Uh, it could be they've 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 chatted twice in our chat room. Thank you for the worm boy. Uh, and I guess second time is the charm. So congratulations, yeah. you guys. Uh, we'll get this out to you asap. All right. So bringing us back in to. Asarius, you guys begin to step into the interior of the Four Corners. Immediately you can see the arched barn roof type interior, uh, a good 20 or so feet off the ground at its apex, and it is a central apex that runs from the front to the back uh, with a kind of somewhat curved barn-like top. Uh, there are rafters pointed across, and you can see there are different boxes and barrels placed up in the edges for storage reasons. To your right, there is a bar being run by what looks to be a, a somewhat jovial, grinning bugbear that has kind of mashed some sort of wax into very heavily grown uh, fur on the face and pulled it into like a try type pointed mustache goatee appearance, but it's just a continuation of the fur. Um, and as a mid-conversation, you can see there are a good seven or eight tables scattered amongst the room with candles on them that are you know, burned halfway down and wax splatters across the center. Uh, the room is filled with all kinds of unique people. You can see uh, Knowles, one in the far corner and one to the far left, sitting there with large tankards, drinking, conversing. Probably a half dozen goblins or so scattered around the interior. Um, some orcs, you can see what looks to be uh, a few Kryn drow in here as well. Uh, and as you all step into the interior chamber, the energy kind of comes to a slight standstill as everyone looks over to the uh, brightly colored and different individuals. Bo. Yeah. Punch me. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was such an invitation, I couldn't. No, it was. I'm not going to make you roll martial arts damage. Uh, but your dex modifier is? Just my dex mod? Yep. Plus five. You take six points of damage. Okay. <laughs> Poof! Oh, it clocks you. Sorry, I could, probably, I could have done a little less fervor. Yeah, it's all right. Sorry. As you kind of stop for a second, the whole crowd raises an eyebrow or grumbles to themselves and chuckle, and they all kind of Just go back to their business. Give them all a little bit of the crazy eye. What you do notice also is to the to the, the front left of, of your entryway, a large portion of the central chamber on the far left corner is a gravel pit, like 35 foot by 35 foot gravel pit. Oh. Uh, that encompasses the center, and you can see there are there is a chair set at each corner of this pit. I'm sure it's for doing foley work or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> deep, deep joke. You do see um, sections of the gravel seem to be darkly stained, um, and sitting in... <laughs> Sitting in one of the chairs, you see uh, a really thick, muscular ogre. Uh, like most ogres, you see can are very muscular in general, but also carry a a rather hefty amount of uh, thick ogre skin and, and, and fat that also just makes them a, a walking powerhouse or sledgehammer. Uh, this is a pretty cut ogre, <laughs> like. You can see a lot of muscle definition, and is currently wrapping or removing wraps from his hands, where you can see there are blood stains across it. And you can see two other individuals, uh, two knolls, that are currently being, like, drink having 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 fresh drinks poured into their glasses and mugs, as they themselves are beat to shit. Right. Um, and the other chairs. What's up? In, like, are they in the other chairs? Or are uh, they? they they are no longer in the chairs in the other ring. They've been. There are over nearby tables, and they're currently being kind of consoled by their friends and such. Uh, the ogre that's there, you can see there's a pile in the center of the, uh, the the gravel pit that is a combination of gold coins, jerky, looks to be some sort of a locket, uh, as well as a raw piece of ore. It's just like a small pile of kind of loose pocket treasures. Um, and as soon as the ogre finishes unwrapping its, uh, its its wrappings on its hands, it walks over and begins to just kind of scoop it up, as well as a nice helping of gravel into a pouch, and goes off and orders a drink. <gasps> Did you see that guy? Yeah, yeah, he's a fighter. I want to be his friend. His friend? I'd... 
you want to go to the bar? <laughs> okay. okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sit down. Uh, I'll buy you that drink. You do this to the ogre? Yeah. Okay, the ogre is, is kind of leaning forward, and you come up to about the waist of this ogre. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, it, the guy's kind of almost bending at a 45 degree angle to rest his shoulders on the edge of the bar. And as soon as you say this, the head twitches a little bit to hear you and then just continues to ignore you and staring ahead at the bartender who's in the process of getting what looks to be a pretty hefty cask from underneath the bar and brings it up on top. And you can see the bartender, uh, the bugbear, kind of glances over at you and gives you a look, a little wink, and continues to prepare to pop it while the ogre just kind of shoves this large, Ding to shit tankard that was previously uh, attached to the side of his belt forward toward the bartender and just continues to not acknowledge your existence. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not a, not a bad night of work, huh? It's pretty good. Sad I missed the fight. It's the ground. There's always more. Doesn't even look at you, just keeps looking forward. Stick around, there's, there's always, always more. more. How do you uh, throw your hat in the ring? Or something like that. Now the head kind of turns towards you, and you can see the one of the eyes is destroyed. <laughs> like the right eye in the head, it looks like it's taken some heavy damage and is healed back enough to at least not, not become a necrotic problem. Um, <laughs> But you can see where like the iris is split, and it's just it's not a functional yeah. eye. It's it's ruined, and it doesn't move within the socket. But the other eye kind of shifts over towards you, and you can see that the jaw on this ogre is a series of heavy scars, where you can see it's been split in three different places and healed back over. Uh, a broken, jagged row of teeth and curved tusks tend to tangle outside of the lower jaw. Um, you can see sprigs of attempted chin hair. That ends up being just a tuft of maybe seven or eight longer hairs that kind of tangle yes. into this awkward, thin braid or lock that just kind of drifts and taps the edge of the top of the clavicle as the head shifts and looks towards you and says, If you're looking to enter, just drop your ante. And points back to the gravel pit. I'd be happy to take it from you. You're gonna be fighting next? Is it like a reigning champion type of thing? No. Whoever wants the ante can enter. Uh. Sure, if I don't like what you drop, I leave it to the riffraff. <laughs> mm. And everyone else is the riffraff, not you, though. You smell like human. Wow, you're very astute. It's accurate. It's a terrible smell. Yeah, I've heard that before. T- Jesus, okay, come on, man. Makes me hungry. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ignore that and have one more question for you. No more questions. And he turns back and takes the tankard from the bar, now filled, tosses a couple of silver pieces over the bar towards the bartender from the winnings that he pulled up from the center of the gravel pit and just I'll stomps. fight you for a question. Just sits down and keeps oh, drinking. Fuck. Fucking get a drink and then go back over. What were you going to ask him? Oh. Want to hear if he's been having nightmares? <laughs> oh. She's a good detective. I thought she was going to ask him out or something. Yeah. It was weird. You did? Really? I wasn't aware that was an option. I he did say I smelled very nice. He said, you made him hungry. I heard it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have that effect on people sometime. Mm, nicely <laughs> done. Ooh. The bartender's sister waiting. The bugbear goes, hi, hi. You want something? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just get a nail. All right. What's your name? Jeez. What's yours? Risk. Risk the mad. What's your name? Risk the mad. Risk. 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 Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> okay, Risk. Um, I'm Bo. Bo the Sane. Currently. <laughs> For now. One ale coming up. It turns around and goes and starts pouring. 
What made you mad? <laughs> Lots of things. <laughs> What's the most recent? Lots <laughs> <laughs> of questions. <laughs> Makes me real mad. Oh, questions make you mad. Oh, just, okay. Why is everyone here, like, feels like they're hitting on me, but also insulting me at the same time? It is so blatantly obvious that Beauregard is going to start a bar brawl in here. I am pulling my cloak over to hide my person. I think what? people here don't like answering questions, Bo. Yeah, City of Beasts thing. Maybe asking why people don't like an answering questions, that mm -hmm. might, like, shed some illumination on the problem. It's still right. a question, though. Yeah. Uh oh. Right. Is there anyone sitting in this whole place that's at a table by themselves? Maybe like. You can make a, make a perception check. Yeah. 20. Oh. 21. Okay. Uh, most of the tables are fairly busy. There is one table on the far right side, back end. Uh, it's a smaller table, and there's only one individual sitting there, and it is a drow. Sure. It is a, uh, a female drow. Uh, Dark black hair across kind of that light blue gray skin tone. Um, hair is pulled back into a very, very, very tight ponytail that is then kind of uh, multiple times bound. So it's almost like a series of periodic bindings to where it drags to the lower back. Um, it looks to be flowing clothes, no Korean armor necessarily. So you don't get a sense this is a soldier mm -hmm. uh, of the military and is currently. Clutching hands around a drink and just staring right at Bo. <gasps> your uh, your actions have garnered some attention. <clears throat> Ten o'clock, back of the room. I turn around and look at him. Her? Her? It's a lady. It's a lady. lady. Sorry. Shall we go talk, talk to her? No. What do you mean, yes, we're here for information. Maybe your smell is making her hungry. I'm yet. telling you, oh everyone is horny over it me here. It occurs to me that I'm hungry. I'm going to order some food. My God, I'm going to go to the bar and order we're some We're here for everybody. information. Yeah. People are responding. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're just an interesting one, aren't you? Oh, you're the you're first person like to colors. say that. You're very bright. Thank you. I try. All right. Okay. Yeah. You hungry? Yeah. Whatever you've got in the kitchen, I think I'd love to feed my friends and uh, have them have a fine meal. Especially if you have any, uh, if we can get like an assortments of meats and vegetables, Jesus. would be really like great. a breakfast spread. Like a breakfast spread. All right. All right. Hold on just a second. Get the breakfast spread. Going okay. right on it. Breakfast spread. You notice as uh, he talk, he shouts an order to himself and then responds from the other side and goes off and starts making food out <laughs> of this small little. Kind of kitchen shack that's attached to the outside of the barn. He just talked to himself, you were saying? Yeah. I think there's two people in one right there. It's, he's the mad, w never mind. Um, I thought he was just angry at you. I mean, people seem to be on occasion. Uh, okay, everyone's in a mood. I'm going to go over to <laughs> the, the drow. <laughs> I'm going to tag along a little behind. I'm going to wait for breakfast. She's like hey, Captain Heat, and we are the one who is in the mood. All right. I'll take that one. You step up to the table. I sit down. Oh God. The seat taken. It is now. Correct answer. <clears throat> it's been cold. I'm not used to this. Where are you from? Where are you from? Starts drinking. A little bit further south. Traveling. Touring. What is your destination? Currently, it was this barn. Well, congratulations, you made it. I did. Feel pretty good about that, too. You should. Mm -hmm. Looking for someone, though. Well, I hope you find them. Seems like a lot of people are missing these days. Dangerous places, these fields. Mm -hmm. So 
Someone grabs the what? drink and stands up and walks away. Oh. As they as they go past, can I uh, just try to br- brush up against them and uh, just see if see if I can? If, are they holding anything in their pouches or or? They have some pouches, yeah. I'm just gonna try to pick pick a pocket. Okay, go for it. Oh go for it. That's the beginning of the end. Do it. Um, oh. Sleight of hand, twenty nine. Whoa. This is a random pocket. I'm not going for anything particular. This is all of okay. Shit. All right. You kind of reach up and just kind of like not even looking, reach and it takes a second for your fingers to find a pouch, but something cylindrical and cold. Finds your grasp and you kind of pull it aside and dart off, and no one seems to make any note of your. When when I touched its form, it seemed all there, no illusions or anything. Uh, make an ins. Uh, <laughs> make make a perception check. Five. Five. It seemed all there. Seemed all there. <laughs> okay. Did I get any type of feeling on what she was looking for when she was staring through my soul? Make an insight check. Eighteen. Eighteen. Hard to read the the, the true uh, length and breadth of the intent, but uh, seemed to be genuinely taken aback that you were here, like oh. a human of like you. Yeah. You can't tell if it was an offense or something more sinister. You don't know. Did she leave bow or the whole establishment? Left bow. Just moved over to like the back wall and is now, after passing by, mm-hmm. not is just leaning on the back wall with the tankard and is still kind of keeping a side eye towards Bo. Uh huh. And go back to the group. Did you make her so horny that she had to go relieve herself? Pretty sure she wants to kill me. Hmm. Not near the group. I will just look at what I got. <laughs> it's a greater healing potion. Oh, okay. Ooh. Nice. Sweet. I'll so take far. that. No, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's legit. I'm gonna pass it over. Sick. Do you think, Julie, should we go talk to her again? Uh, First of all, what are we doing here? I'll make my way over to where she's we're going to. Wait, right. you're gonna go talk to her? Wait, wait, we're don't. We're going to corner this one, okay. I'm gonna go near, <laughs> near and just watch. Okay. As I start making my way over, I have a little bit of a, Sway in my swagger, and I get near a table and I'll kind of trip and fall into the chair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. Hello? What's your name? You want to know my name? I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't ask. Seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. It always is. If you want to know, throw something in the ring. Are you, are you a fighter? I have been known to throw a fist every now and then. I don't need any more of that. Did you see that filthy fucking human punch me right in my goddamn kisser? I did. Did you deserve it? I can't remember. <laughs> what is one of them doing in a place like this? Can you believe it? Steps of him walks away from you to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so proud. You guys suck. I'll sit down in her chair, look at the group, and be like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, it sounds like if we want to talk to this lady, you're gonna have to beat her up. <laughs> I have a thought. Okay. I think to get any amount of fucking respect in here, we're gonna have to beat some fucking ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm willing to do it. I think it's a fisticuffs thing. I think it's no armor thing. I think it's four people against each other. So, you join me. But <laughs> we don't really tell. You know, we don't project. That we're necessarily fighting each other. Okay, 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 okay. Yasa okay. just quietly goes, ah! You gotta. Oh, actually, <laughs> yeah. Yasha, honestly, right now is looking uncomfortable. Oh, fuck. 
I'm genuinely is is, is just kind of like. Um, normally, I'd be into this kind of thing, but uh, maybe not here. And she's looking just around the room nervously. Hmm. Is, is everything okay, Yasha? Yeah, just you know, I. Uh, this is where I'm from, and maybe don't want to make a scene. Oh fuck! Are we embarrassing you? Are we those people? We are those people. Obviously. Those people. Obviously. But it's fine. Your plan your plan was fine. You and Jester fight. Get it. Do it. Do it. We'll yeah. win. It'll just be down to you and you. One of you throws the fight, I assume. Maybe you should work that out ahead of time. Yeah, you're then we'll get to. tons of respect and we'll ask all our questions. Because you're about to have an embolism, throw something in there and yeah. start fighting. Let's just not think about these things too much. Well. Show me what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I take um. Here, I pull one of those jade uh, stones and I slap it into Beauregard's hand. Damn. Use this. Oh, How many jade stones do you have? Four. There you I go. had four. Yeah, you have, I have two. Two, now. and I gave her one. All right. And then I'll um, take one of my uh, several pouches that I bought. Fill it with like. What oh, seems right? It seems good. A silver. jade stone worth a hundred gold pieces. Yeah, oh, silver. Let's use That's silver so in this place. That's so much. You want some That's bloody, too much. You want some bloody manacles? Then look, somebody just put the locket in there and he like. There's a crossbow. I'll throw like another 10 gold and I take the bloody manacles because that seems hardcore. <laughs> okay. Bloody manacles, gold, jade piece. So you step out into the open gravel pit. Fuck. Oh, fuck. oh wait. <laughs> okay. The lock. Oh god, we should team up and then. When it's just us, then we, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants to? Who wants to throw? Should we like kind of go based on, like, what if you? How it's going? I'll throw it to you. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. So you walk out on your own. Yeah. And drop the contents of your hands into the center. So <laughs> in the middle of the gravel, at which point you see about seven different characters in the interior of the four corners kind of sit up. And look over in the direction. I go take a seat. You go take a seat. In the thing. In the chair. In on one the of the chairs. Pit? Okay. You go ahead and sit in one of the chairs. Um, you watch as the uh, the ogre, the ogre that you had approached the bar, kind of <laughs> pushes past two of the orcs and makes his way to the gravel pit. Reaches and grabs the uh, the bag of recent winnings. And looking at you, kind of throws it on top. You're anting the center, and walks over to where you're sitting. And goes, move out of my chair. Oh, I stand up. Uh, I pull out a sequined glove, <laughs> put it a in the middle, glove. and then I go sit in another chair. <laughs> what is the sequined glove? The single white sequined glove was most of my stupid artifact that I started the campaign with. <laughs> <laughs> like a Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like a Michael Jackson glove. Yeah, that's okay. Amazing. All right. So as you drop your sequin, sequin glove, you can see a few a few faces of nearby onlookers. It's like three goblins on the edge, kind of looking and go. <laughs> they, they put some actual. It's magic. It's, oh, it's magic. It's magical. It's a mug. Oh, it's, ma it's magical, everyone. It's magical. But in just like a decorative sense, you see a uh, green scale dragonborn. In a breastplate of armor that looks himself a little bit drunk, but is well armed, kind of sits up and begins walking towards the gravel pit. Right before his foot touches the gravel, there's this blur of motion, and you see the drow female earlier is now in the pit, kind of cutting him off. Oh shit! Oh god! Everybody wants bones. <laughs> Walks what? over and I'm still waiting for breakfast. I have no idea any of this is happening. <laughs> Food begins to arrive for you. Hey guys, I got the. Oh. <laughs> You're going to get your asses kicked. You didn't eat. <laughs> As everyone's preparing. Bring it back to the table. As everyone's preparing, I'm just going to cast Mage Hand. Just have it have it invisible nearby, just okay. in case. Sure. sure. <laughs> um, I'll throw. I'll throw. A, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're eating, eating breakfast. Cool. I'm eating breakfast. Yeah. You're already fine. eating breakfast. They're already at the at the chairs. Yeah. You'd have to if you're gonna cast anything. You have to walk up to them and do it. Yeah, that's. Visibly. I don't think that's fair, though, is it? Uh, you can certainly try. No, that doesn't seem fair. 
Um, Take it from me, I've gotten thrown in jail for that before. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds like cheating. All right, so uh, it is Beauregard, the drow. Jester still sits, stands at the center, or no, you're over right, in a chair, yeah. and the ogre sits, and you can see the drow and the ogre are now looking at Jester expectantly. <laughs> Oh, come on, I put a glove in and stuff. Hold on. Um, I only have one thing that's worth anything. Uh, you need some money? I pull out my diamond that I bought with Caduceus. Oh, that's a lot. It's worth 300. Oh, that's a lot. I don't have anything else. Do you put the diamond in the center? Jesus. Is that too much? Yeah. It's only it's too late now. What are you doing, Jester? Back. I'll put it back, just like they say in Vegas. Take my glove back and put it on. <laughs> Ooh, All right, the glove for the battle. Yeah. When the diamond hits, you can see Shut everyone in the room up. goes like, oh, and the ogre looks at you with this big grin and goes. <laughs> he then reaches back and pulls what looks to be a short sword in his hand. And yeah, be, kind of be, sword? Yeah, well, you notice you notice at this point that the people that have been fighting, since you haven't actually seen a fight yet, it isn't necessarily fisticuffs. Uh -huh. <laughs> and at this point, you realize that the wounds the others that's been stained involved puncture wounds, slash wounds. This is kind of a whatever weapons goes type brawl. Right. Oh, whatever goes, huh? Well, whatever goes from their perspective. Yeah. yeah. So, so, if Jester summons some. Unicorns, people might get pissy. So who knows? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Give me the ring. Bring me the ring. Woo! I want the ring. I want Matt to bring out a kitty litter box. Give me the ring. 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 Give All right. Uh, the pit is most uh, of the bar. I am going to throw oh, up. You got it. The house what is so fast. a diamond. Jester. I don't have anything. Oh, you got those houses so quick. Wait, you could have thrown in like 50 silver and would have done it. What do you mean? We, 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 we saw, these, at saw these together at Colville's joint. Were you, were you guys, you guys just watching from the side here? Found a separate table? I was getting breakfast, man. So I was sitting in the drow's table. I understand why they call it the it's Four it's Corners. Oh, cool. Ford. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to get a little. I want to make sure that I have sure. 30 feet yeah, of clearance that. for the whole thing in case I have to start keeping people from getting beat to death. Okay. Caleb, where would you like to be? Uh, I think I was standing by the door here, yeah, right near where Bora got us. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yasha okay. creeps over to this side, kind of across the other side of the door. Are none of us over here? Yeah, I'm going to be over there. Okay. It's crowded over on that corner. Yeah. It is. Um, Caduceus, you're here. Or you want to be with as long as I, as long as the whole thing's thirty feet, within thirty feet of me. You're closer to do that, but right now everyone's <laughs> crowding <laughs> up to the I'll outside. I'll the go. We're joining Caleb First over there with my too. whatever yeah, breakfast go. I can manage. I've never done one of these. I don't think I've done a bar fight. Really. Teamwork. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work here, Until guys. It's just you two, and then blood. I don't think it's going to get to that point. Kill her. No mercy. Weapons, arms, legs, eyes. Goblins. Yes. I'm going to move up another. Uh, an actual Korean soldier comes up to the edge and starts watching. This hobgoblin kind of steps up onto a table over here. They are all now moving in to form this kind of space around. I think if. Mm. So, that being the case, I am going to need everyone to roll initiative, please. Yes. Or by everyone, else, that would be Beauregard and Jester. Oh my god, Jesse! Come on, Laura. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna use my boots. I should. Oh, we don't have the. We already used the dodecahedron today. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I. That's all right. It's only whoever goes well, first probably survives. Use a concentration. I would. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm not interfering with this fight. Nice. Uh, I am making no such promise. I'll keep him alive. <laughs> Alrighty. So, <laughs> 25 to 20? 21. Right. Ooh, nice. Very nice. 
20 to 15. What did I just, I'll just tell you it's a nine. Okay, good to know. Nine! nine. Represent! Nine. Lucky number nine. So, <laughs> as everyone kind of gathers around the edges and the faint music begins to turn into a boom, 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 boom. You can see one of the, the knolls in the far back uh, has begun to beat a small drum that kind of kept on to the side, and the bartender, looking over in the back, kind of pulls up a small drum that he keeps behind the edge and is like, dip, 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 kind of patting the top of it in this tiny little thing. Before we get like going, <laughs> real. I take the back guano that Caleb gave me and I just smoosh it in my hands and it's just smear yeah. across no. my face. That's disgusting. Gross. That is gross. <laughs> no, that it's pretty it. fucking awesome. I do I love it. Excuse you. some special sequence glove flourishes. All right. And as you're doing that, you watch as the, the, the drow and the ogre, as everyone kind of sizes each other up, there is a moment of a flinch and you go first, but what are you doing? I... Go to the drow, kind yep. of in between the drow and the ogre, first, but yeah. in, yep. And while running, pull my sphere out and spin with a flourish and come around. Your, your? My staff. Staff, gotcha. Okay, go for it, towards the drow. Natural 19, so that is that a. That does hit. Yeah, okay, that's a, what is that, 20, 26. 27. Go ahead that hits. Damage. Oh my god, I'm shaking. Okay. Okay, eight damage. Eight points of damage. Stunning strike. Crack! Going right Stunning. for the temple. Strike. Just going for a quick knockout. Uh, that is going to be uh, 14. What's the DC? 14. 14. Crack! The draw looks back at you with an angry expression. Yeah, pop! Doing it again. Go for it. Uh, Another attack. Going around the other side. Come on, bish. That's not great. <laughs> 15. Fifteen, you go ahead and make a second strike with the with the staff. This time, the drow seems to notice and woof, ducks out of the way, and then uses a reaction to whack, slam you oh. right in the face with its fist. Ooh, with shit. its fist. Natural twenty. Oh shit! Okay. Right there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She's got no armor on at all. Oh um, shit! Uh, that is going to be twelve points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Nice. And I need you to make. The Constitution oh, saving. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my god. Totally god. Fucking monk. Mm. Oh my god. Double oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, this could oh. be so bad. Dang. Constitution um, saving throw? Correct. Weird. Weird question. Uh, Weird question. Does Sentinel at Death's Door actually, is it is it visible or is it just something I can do? <sighs> like there's no, there's nothing here that says verbal, somatic, or otherwise. Is it just my presence mm -hmm. within 30 feet that makes something it's not happen? Pheromones. Uh, I would say maybe if you want to keep it low key, because it's just like a, there is an action. It's not a high DC sleight of hand check to try and hide it if you want to. What are you trying to do? Cancel, cancel the natural twenty. Mm. No, it's too soon. Okay. It just feels like a cheat. What'd you want? Six. Oh no. Oh no, you're you stunned. Feel the fist strike into your head, and oh, oh no, wrong. sorry, other one. Oh, no, no, that's okay. That. That's fine. That's no, fine. No, 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 sorry. Come on, no take backs. No, too bad. Okay. <laughs> um, I used to play this an enemy. I can't believe she's. All of a sudden, your entire world freezes in a flash of white, and you just hear ringing, and your little bit of vision you can see of the outline of the interior of this tavern is just trails in a blur. Mm. You are stunned until the end of its next turn. <laughs> that's right. Yes, You're good. I believe that's. <laughs> End of your turn, then. Yeah, and that it's was done. just her. Like that was just her turn, right? Yeah. Now they're both. Yep. Now but she did use her reaction. Mm -hmm. she did. Yeah. Now it's her turn, so she gets her reaction back. Oh shit! And is going to. Spin I have, around this I have way. a theory about all of this. And is going to go ahead and okay. make three attacks against you. Three attacks against <laughs> Bo. With advantage. With advantage because you are stunned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, boy. That's a waste of a turn. Go after the ogre first. Totally. You're talking She's to the drought, right? Yeah. Totally. That is yeah. Oh my god. 27 to hit. Oh, it's oh, you take 10 points of bludgeoning damage. I got you. Okay. I got you. Uh, that's going to be 18 to hit. Misses. Misses. And even in your stunned state, you managed to just barely budge out of another fist throw. 
Um, knowing it's not much of an issue, he's going to go ahead and move Why over towards Jester. And he's going to go ahead and bonus action trim to strike you. Uh, that's going to be 15 to hit. I don't believe that hits. I keep my shield up and my sequence love comes up behind it. <laughs> <laughs> the, her drow eyes look up and <laughs> narrow for uh, flurry blows, fourth oh, no. attack. <laughs> Uh, no, that's a 13 to hit, rolled ah. really bad. And goes and goes another, another punch, and you just go ahead and deflect with the shield. Um, rest of movement is going to go ahead and just shift over this direction. That finishes her turn. Uh, the ogre is now going to charge up towards both of you. He's going to go ahead and make a strike against each, making the first attack against the, uh, the monk. That hits. Yeah, that's a 23. And that is. 11 points of slashing damage with one short sword, and is going to go ahead and attempt to make another strike against you, Jester. Okay. Uh, that is 21 to hit. Yeah, it hits. All right. You take 13 points of slashing damage from the short sword that slashes past from the other hand. Um, okay, I'm going to use Hellish Rebuke. Go for it. Um, is it a constitution saving throw? It's a deck saving deck throw. Saving throw. Fail. Yes. Okay, that's 3d10. Ooh, 15. 17. 17? Yeah. Woo. So, as the ogre slashes both of you, kind of chuckling, goes for a second attack, and then suddenly this burst of ice shards go blasting into his face. You see bits of it kind of sticking in the neck and under the jaw, kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, it's going to go ahead and end the ogre's turn. Uh, that brings us to you, Jester. It's me. Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm You're surrounded. You're pushed in the corner and surrounded, while Bo on the other end is like, this is terrible. Hand against the wall, trying to regain her state of mind. Okay. <laughs> Jester. I'm going to. Do it. Do it. I'm going to cast. End of next turn. You are technically no longer stunned, actually, because it's the end of the. Uh, the monk's turn, if I recall. The stun only lasts until the end of their next turn, and she did she stun did you out I'm going to cast action. Command and cast at command. second level. Ooh, okay. Nice. Let's see here, just double checking. It's which one? End of their next turn, yeah, so you are no longer stunned. Oh, wow. Okay, it's actually good to remember, don't stun people on your reaction. Mm -hmm. We figure out next. Not that it did halt the rest of your turn. Which yeah, that, no, it sucks. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I, empathy. Yeah, it so grows. What is I'm it? going to wisdom saving throws. Uh, yes, wisdom saving throws. All right. Both, uh, both of them. Nice. I'm casting at second level. The monk rolled a natural seventeen okay. plus four, so uh, okay, so succeeds. it succeeds. The ogre. No, that's a ten. Yes, I say, grovel at my feet, scum. <laughs> <laughs> The ogre goes, and it's the next turn they they did. This happens. Mm. They spend their next action doing this. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the target must succeed or follow the command on its next turn. Correct. So as soon as you shout that, everyone kind of laughs, <laughs> and the ogre goes, <laughs> and you can see like this confusion, this wave of what the fuck enter the ogre's face. So that's your action. That's my action, and then. Uh, yeah, that's a spell, so I can't do my other bonus action, so. I'm just going to look over at the drow and be like, ha 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 ha, good times, huh? <laughs> As you look back and laugh and do that, all you see is the monk going, No, oh, no. <laughs> all right, top of the round, Bo, you're up. Oh, okay, shake it off really quick. Uh, wink at the guy in front of me, and then uh, turn around, and I'm going to use my staff to vault off of the floor, and then I'm going to come down for an elbow to the ogre's throat. Okay, are you going on this side? Or yeah, behind or him. Behind kind of coming there. up from behind. So you oh, could pin, nice. pincer with Jester from there. Yeah, does that mean I get advantage? Yep. You do, yeah. Okay, attack one. Just leap in the air and come down. Wow! Mm. Wow. 16. 16 hits. Okay. Okay, he's send me make a little note. Okay, and take my staffy staff. <laughs> Uh, six damage. Alrighty. Stunning strike! Stunning strike. This guy's constitution is probably some stupid. Uh, that is. She's going for the drag. 
16. Because he's going to do stuff on his next turn, because I told him it's, to. As, you, as, you, as the, the, uh, the staff slams into it, this ogre is solid muscle, and even though you hit right between where you can see a portion of the exposed nerve clusters would cause a like-sized figure to buckle, no effect. This is a tough <laughs> son of a bitch. Um, that's your first I'm, attack? I saw movement, yeah? Uh, you do, you have 5, 10, 15, 20. You, you have 20 more yeah. feet of movement. Yeah, you can do that. And kind of get in, in melee with the, the girl. Yep. And then I have a second attack, so I'm going to go whack, try and hit her in the face. Do I have advantage? Is she flanking? No, there is no you're not directly flanking. That's that's good. That's good. Uh, 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 twenty-seven. That hits. Right? Roll damage. 25. No, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Alrighty. Okay, 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 okay. Nine. Nine points of damage. All right. Flurry blows. Go for it. No wait. <laughs> Patient defense. Patient defense. Okay. Nice. Call. You go into a defensive stance. You now take the dodge action. Nice. Thank you. All right. That finishes your gobo. That's my gobo. Go-bo. 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 That's your gobo. Smart. All right. It is the Only drow's one. turn. The drow now preparing for gets hit in the back of the shoulders from Bo, but is currently still focused on Jester. Seeing suddenly magic attempting to affect its mind, she knows that's a dangerous scenario. And then goes ahead and is going to attempt to strike towards you. Sentinel. Yes, you may. It's a natural one, so she misses. Goes to swing towards you, and as the fist comes towards you, put the shield up and bow. Would you roll for an attack? 19. That hits. Go and roll damage. Bow actually clocks her in the base of the skull and watches she. It completely prevents her attack from here. And kind of hurts the knuckles in that hand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 11 damage. Nice. Nice. Alrighty. She can't move. Well, no, because oh, no, that, wasn't wasn't a, that wasn't a movement-based one, right, so sorry, movement sorry. is still in play. Uh-huh. Uh, second attack against you. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is eight points of bludgeoning damage. As the, the, the fist comes up and clocks you underneath the shield, and using one hand to try and pry the shield away, just uppercuts you oh. right in the lower chin. Make a constitution saving throw for me. Uppercut <laughs> causes your head to reel from the impact, and for a split second, all you see are clouds and unicorns the size of hamsters. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's going to spin around. He's going to go ahead and, and pushing off of Jester's shoulder, jump up and do a kick towards the ogre's head, and then come down with a second kick onto you as the bonus oh, action. Oh, hot. That's dope. Yeah, super yeah, that's hot. really cool. It's morphin' time! Uh, <laughs> even with a five, naturally, still hits the ogre with all the bonuses intact. Disadvantage. Uh, bow. Hmm? Disadvantage on bow. On bow, yeah. Uh, so the, the ogre takes an additional 10 points of bludgeoning damage, and then it gets to you with disadvantage. Uh, 17 to hit. Miss. I believe misses you. Yeah. So the, the other kick, you actually managed to block it with your arm and kind of cause it to kind of slide and hit the gravel next to you, causing bits of stone and rock to kind of spray up in the vicinity. Kind of give her like a nod in the middle yeah. of it. It's awesome. And then there's a moment where, where she lands and looks up at you and goes like, uh-huh. <laughs> just not quite sure where, where this is going. Uh, that's going to go ahead and finish the monk's turn. Uh, that brings us to the ogre's go. The ogre. Who just got kicked in the face goes slams a knee onto the ground, like crosses the blades in front. He he falls prone if he's groveling. Yes, 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 queen. I'll I'll put it this way because he's groveling. (laughs) (laughs) Spends his action doing that, right? Oh, yeah. And then goes (laughs) and uses half his movement to get up from prone. Okay. Wait, why? He could do that that fast? That seems lame. Yeah, I mean, but they, you sped his action, he yeah, couldn't do anything. That's true. That's it's a level true. one spell. Yeah. It's fine. Um, he didn't kill himself. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, the target falls prone and then ends its turn. Okay, that's for ah. clarification. So, yeah. 
on the ground, facing the ground, <laughs> angrily. <laughs> Bits of stone get lodged in the back of the mouth. Uh, that finishes the ogre's turn. It's your turn, Jester. I'm you stunned. are stunned. Um, so you're just like. Like dancing around you, the colors are beautiful. You hear harp music. It's it's amazing. Tiefling penis. <laughs> uh, that brings us to the top bow. You're up. Go on for the monk. All right. Um, just me and her. So after I give her the nod, oh. I'm gonna go and try and get a little knee to the kidney. Go for it. Is it is it now? She moved. Is, are, is she now in between the two of them? Oh yeah, you can move and. Can I can I flank I mean, like with Jester if I go to uh, the other side? Uh, can I move around? Uh, if you shift here. Yeah, and then uh, be. Technically, no, because you're not threatening. You are yeah, threatening. Oh, never mind. Okay, first attack. Sixteen. Sixteen misses. You go to swing, and the monk, ready for this maneuver, actually grabs your wrist, pulls you in, and uses a reaction to pop you right in the face. Do I still patient defense? No. That is going to be a twenty-five to hit. Probably yeah. Hits. Damn. That is going to be. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Jesus Christ. And he's going to go ahead and make another constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. shit. That's, a, that's totally wrong. Uh, 14. 14. Mm. No, you're stunned. Fuck! But only. The save is higher than yours. So, with the wrist pulled forward and crack right in the jaw. Oh, your, you, your vision kind of tunnels to darkness, and all you can see is gravel before you, and you, in your head you're like, I'm punching away, but all you see is Bo going, <sighs> in his own little world, fighting nothing. Um, the monk, just watching that happen, because it closes the rest of your turn. Yeah. Um, that finishes your go. It is now the monk's turn. You're no longer stunned, but she still managed to shut down your turn. It's just, it's just and I'm not stunned. stunned. You, uh, because that was the end of her turn. Correct. Okay. Yay, reactions. Yay. There you go. Oh, man. Okay. The monk looking at the scenario is going to go ahead and do. Uh, he's going to go ahead and spend a key point to take the, as a bonus action, the disengage maneuver, and then actually vault over. The ogre that's on the ground, flipping in the air, grabs onto one of the the the, the ceiling uh, boards and swings over, lands down on the opposite side of the ogre. Hi. Fuck, she's so cool. Acrobatic. Right there, and is going to go ahead and coming down, slam with advantage on two strikes uh, against the ogre. That is advantage, right? Yeah, with yeah. advantage on it. Yeah, that hits. Seven points of damage. Second strike. That hits. Seven points of damage. And is just going to do one additional attack. That misses. Okay. <laughs> we went the advantage. It was like three and a four. Um, yeah. The ogre is just in the process of getting back up off the ground and rolls out just as the final attack comes down and blasts into. The nearby gravel and stone kind of pulls her fist back, and you see their stones kind of pressed into the skin. A little bit of blood is starting to pour down, um, and the ogre angrily gets up for its turn, uh, and is going to go ahead and take two strikes at you, Jester, and then action surge and take two strikes on the monk. Whoa! Hey, little old me, but why? So the first attack against you, that's a twenty-two to hit. I guess that hits. <laughs> You take nine points of slashing damage from the short sword striking right across your shield, pushes it into you, and the blade just catches you across the forehead and just gashes you from one eyebrow up to the edge of your hairline. No. I think I've got bangs now, you guys. Are so cool. 25 to hit. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be 16 points of slashing damage. As you pull back and look, looking at the blood in your hand from recoiling, look up just in time as the other short sword pierces underneath the shield and catches you in the abdomen. You push away with the shield, preventing it from going as deep as it could have gone. That's like two inches of blade that just caught you right between where the leather armor protects you. Oh, oh my god. Action surge, spin around towards the other monk. 
that it's a hit and a miss. Uh, so oh. the monk takes. Oh, yeah. one, one, one round. Yeah. Twelve points of damage there, and misses with the other strike. That finishes the ogre's go. Jester, you're up. That's me. Um, okay, I'm going to. Oh, jeez, this all sucks. I'm going to cast. I'm gonna cast Spirit Guardians on myself. Okay. And um, I'm gonna say, oh, my stunty hamster unicorns need to protect me now. <laughs> and I'm gonna cast Spirit Guardians at. Okay. The Spirit Guardians say creatures that you choose? Well, it says. It says if you're evil, they appear fiendish. If you're. Right, but who's affected by it is what I'm asking. What do you mean? Meaning you are in a room that is dense with a lot of people not involved in this fight. If the spell doesn't have a way of not differentiating between who you choose to be affected and not, it's you're about to hit a lot of oh, creatures yeah, yeah, yeah. in this tavern, so just double checking on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been so cool. Protect you, they flit around you. Uh, when you cast a spell, designate you can any designate number of creatures you can see. To, okay. Yes, yes, yes. There you okay. go. So who do you define to be George. unaffected by it? Everybody but uh, the ogre and the drow. Got it. Cool. So as you kind of come to again and focus, you say your little prayer, and everyone watches as all these tiny little bubbles pop in the air around you and emerging from it, these tiny, cute little hamster-sized unicorns that kind of float <laughs> dancing through the air. All right, that's your action. Uh, uh-huh. You want to move? I'm scared he's going to hit me if I do it. Um, do I have bonus healing word? Let me check. See. You couldn't cast healing word this turn anyway because you already used the right. Uh, regular spell. Yes. Okay. Then yeah, I'm guess I'm good right here then. All right, you're gonna stay right there. Mm-hmm. You got it. Okay. That finished just go. In the corner. Uh, at that moment, uh, Frumpkin, uh, seemingly terrified by the unicorns flying in the air, runs screeching uh, out towards the drow and starts dancing around her legs, running circles under her feet and using the help action. Like for who? Uh, to the drow. Gonna help the drow? No, not help. Um, distract. What is it? You can aid a friendly creature in attacking a creature within five feet of Correct. you. The cat. Okay. You faint. So, distract the target. So, so the next attack way. is gonna be with advantage. Got yeah. it. Nice. All right. So it's dancing so around the drow's feet. Did I see the, the cat? Like, what the? Yeah. yeah. The, the the drow is like still focused, but looks down at the cat and is like. Shh, shh. I get down I'm on a knee and I jam the end of my staff right into her ribs. So you move over to engage? Yeah, I come over, I kind of slide and then jam. <laughs> Make the attack with advantage. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, 21. 21 hits. Wait, yes, 21. 21 hits. Staffy poo. Nine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Nine points of damage. Nine! Crack! <laughs> Stunning strike. Okay. Look, I hope this works. Natural 13 plus 2, 15. Plus 2. Plus she 2. She needs Bane! She needs Bane! She gives a fucking. 15 is the number. 15. No, it's 5. 14. 14 is the 14 number. 14 is the DC. Oh. So the, 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 the impact of the staff two, hits though. in the stomach. She had to roll like. And like impact in the belly, and then the eyes immediately shoot up to you angrily, piercing, piercing red anger out of the drow's eyes. Uh, that's your first attack. Bitch. Your second attack. Second attack. I try and bring up the the staff from the, my kneeling position, and Alrighty. come up uh, for under her jaw. Go for it. Oh my god, that's crazy. Just roll another one. <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> Aw. No, just no. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. No, as you as you, after slamming the staff in the stomach, swing upwards and she catches it, and with the momentum pulls you in, and then is going to go ahead and kick you in the face as you're moving forward. Pop. Oh. Uh, that's going to be a twenty-two to hit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That is going to be seven points of bludgeoning damage. As her foot. Cracks you in the jaw. Your neck almost like snaps, not like bro breaks, but like almost whiplashes you from the impact. Um, is not going to attempt to, to stun you with that. 
You still have the rest of your turn. You have your bonus action. Patient defense. Okay, patient defense. You're under a dodge mode. Ever so slowly. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. In the mage hand. What are you doing? Just be just slightly dragging the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> just like. <laughs> Make a slight yeah. hand check. Yeah. Really close. Make a slight hand check. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 27. <laughs> like the mystery of the stones moving during a desert rain. I tried to time it to every The diamond like, begins football. to slowly carve this path through the gravel, but people are too focused <laughs> on the fight going on on the opposite side of the chamber that, for the time being, it's slowly moving without nope, being. It's like a dollar on a string. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I definitely did not see that. Okay. <laughs> Was hoping. Perfect. All righty. Uh, that brings us to the monk's turn. So the end of Bo's go. The monk angrily is going to unload on you at first, Bo, with disadvantage because you took the dodge action. These are okay, right? Uh, that's going to be uh, twenty to hit. What's your monk? Uh, twenty. Twenty hits. Wow. Doozy. Mm-hmm. That is 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Crack! One fist coming up with a second blow. Uh, natural 20 uh. and 19. Fuck! But you, dude. well, no, this, you have the dodge action, so it was disadvantage. The natural 20 does nothing. I know. Um, yeah. But, but a 19 <laughs> oh, definitely 20. hits. Oh, I thought, was, I thought your armor class was 20. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were saying you rolled, rolled a 19. 19 and a 20. So no, no, hits. sorry, no. Yeah. It, was, it was a 19 Miss. total. It was a oh, total. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying natural oh. 19. No, no, it was, a, it, was, oh. it was a natural nine. Or not, sorry, a natural 10. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Bo's turn. Okay. Bo's turn. 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 Bo the second swing woof, just whiffs as you kind of dodge out of the way, prepared for it. Yeah. Bonus action, there. flurry of blows. Bar and blitz. He's up there. Uh, 15, misses. You're like, you're now if manning this, like, just slapping the blows away. Dial in, dial in, I can see the matrix. Disadvantage, that brings it to a 13. Yes. So that first crack hits you, and then all of a sudden, you go into focus mode. Deflecting, and with each strike, you just parry it off to the side, not even making eye contact, just looking straight ahead, kind of no, remembering so your training. Days, so I'm just there. You go. Wait, did she style. start within 15 feet of me? Oh, did she start her turn? Uh, she would have. Yeah. Oh, so she got she's got to make take. a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save. Oh, that is a uh, nine. Yeah. <laughs> what does that do? That's 3d8 damage. 3D8. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh 15, <laughs> 17. Oof. Oh, that wasn't a no, seven? No, it looked like a seven, oh, but it was a one. Oh, it was a one. So, speed is halved also. Yes. So, uh, after uh, as this series of blows that uh, Bo is deflecting with each strike, ping, <laughs> these tiny unicorns are jabbing and like piercing the side of the neck. It's trying to like bat him away, uh, but she's just currently being ransacked by an to her, a nightmare. Also, I don't know what radiant it's damage. Like it is radiant damage, it also. I don't know if that. No, no, no. I don't know. That's, 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 yeah, if any, anybody Within starts. Within 15 feet. Ogre's turn. Ogre starts the turn. Uh, natural one on the save. Go ahead and roll damage for the ogre. That's cocked. Right. 10, 13 points. 13 points. The ogre begins. It's like spitting at them, like. <laughs> no effect, and just turns around towards you as the, both of them are locked in. As the source of the unicorns, and just does a double strike to try and carve through your torso with both blades. That is natural seventeen. Yeah, that's a, that's like a twenty-five to hit. Okay. Uh, that's going to be nine points of slashing damage. Okay. The next one's going to be twenty to hit. What's your armor class? Eighteen. Eighteen hits you. Ooh, double sixes. Uh, that's going to be. 17 points of slashing damage. Yeah. I'm unconscious. Oh! oh! The unicorn <laughs> fade <laughs> as Jester plummets back. The shield she brought up in time to protect a blow from vitally cutting through her torso. However, it still manages to cleave into the shoulder and she falls to the ground. You spare are the, spare the dying before she even hits the ground. Okay, so you're no longer bleeding. You are stabilized, but, but you are like unconscious. Me. Yep. Okay. Alrighty, that ends the ogre's uh, two strikes there. Dick. So the would, that, would that have been Jester's turn? It would have been. Had she not gone down? Yes. Then the cat continues to jig and dance unless she does something about it. Okay. Okay. Bo, you're gone. Just 
Does that mean advantage. get another advantage? On your first strike against the drow? drow? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I'm trying to just dialed in focus, dialed in focus. That one's cocks. Uh, Everyone witnessed that. Okay. Um, uh, the 18 plus four, or sorry, four plus 18, 22. Four plus eight, four of my words. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good thing you did that, because the other rolls a natural one. one. Yeah. Natural one. <laughs> yep. Ten yep. damage. She's looking rough. Mm, All right. She's looking, she's looking rough. rough. Yeah, but the ogre is still like. The ogre is still up. Ogre's, so ogre's hurt, but hanging in. Yeah, one target is. Second attack against her. <laughs> Uh, 19, 19, which I think hits. hits. Yeah. Nine. Nine points of damage. Nine. Alrighty. So whack, crack with the staff. Each time the drow's knock each side, you can see blood kind of across the gravel pit around her. Comes back up. One eye is a little bit half closed. You can see that kind of that focus coming in, not giving in to the the urge to slip into the darkness. Is just focused on you. Floria blows. Go for it. That's a natural eight. T- nope, that's a it's a fifteen, but that I think still hits with twenty three. Yeah, that hits. Roll damage. Sweet a leg. Better than. I just realized I've been rolling damage dice smaller than what I should have been. Well, there you go. Uh, uh, I should have been rolling d8s for the staffs. That much more epic. Now. Ten, ten damage. Ten damage. Fuck, Ooh. that pisses me off. All right. Um. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 17. 17 misses. misses. Reaction. You can see, like, after the, that, that series of attacks, <sighs> breathing heavy, like, all, like on a thread oh. of consciousness. Oh. And in, in that moment, that final blow, the eyes go <laughs> immediately, just the shine, the anime spark in the eyes. And as you go for that final strike, grabs, and then <laughs> right to your abdomen. Uh, natural 19. Oh, no. That is nine points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. She's rolling the right dice. Our girl is. She's totally rolling the right yeah. fucking dice. Yeah. Our girl's she on the roll. Oh, she's fucking dead, yo. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move around behind her. Okay. And kind of. Yep, yep, um, yep, yep. Blank, 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 blank. Yeah, she's next, right? She's next, yeah. Did she? She just used her reaction to hit me. Correct. I'm gonna bounce. I'm gonna get okay. right to the corner. I'm gonna let her deal with the ogre. Okay. Further if I can. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just catch my breath in the corner. Try not to puke. All right. Her turn. She sees you rush away. And sees her scenario, and how rough it's going. Kind of looking at both both sides. He's gonna go ahead and make two attacks on this ogre. Yeah. Let's bring them both down. Yeah. Natural twenty. Oh. Nice. Be glad you moved away. <laughs> yeah. Do want that for me? Uh, that's gonna be fourteen points of damage to the ogre. And next attack. Natural eighteen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So after after doing this, kind of glancing at both of you. Reaches forward, the ogre has both blades out and is kind of chuckling now, licking the blood from under its lip where you can see it split from one of the previous attacks in the battle for a fourth time now. This this jaw is just wrecked. Um, getting both blades at the side is leaning forward and the drow, kind of still looking at you, just goes. <laughs> hits him right square in the junk. Yeah. And right, and right as the ogre <laughs> leans forward angrily, grabs him over the head and just brings his yeah! jaw down onto her shoulder. Tombstone! Tombstones, I mean, you watch the ogre. <laughs> Both blades, ting, 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 onto the stonework, oh. and then shrugs him off, and he rolls onto the ground unconscious to her side. Oh. At which point, she uses a key point, patient defense. Mm. As, a bonus, oh, as a bonus action. Making it, making and, then, it interesting. and then runs along the side, Parkour's off the side of the tavern. And lands right in front of you. Maybe just make out with her. Yeah. It's your turn. Disarming. Um, <laughs> Persuasion check. <laughs> Disarming tongue. Yeah, <I'm> <laughs> 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 
disarming attack. Ah, now or later. Now or later. I'm gonna cast uh, Spare the Dying on the on the on the, on the ogre. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'd be terrible. That would be. What are you doing? I shouldn't yeah. do that. Uh, I sent Frumpkin running out that window past the ogre. She's on her own. Okay. Diamond still making slow progress. Roll another sleight of hand check okay. for me. <laughs> Not as good. Not as good. Ooh, Seventeen. One, yeah. Okay. It does. It continues to move. And everyone else is like invested in this fight, and one of the goblins to your right goes, huh? Oh no. Okay, so that's okay. Where it stands. good to know, good to know. Bo, what are you doing? I don't yeah. have any type of advantage on anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh my god. Leave it to the dice, man. <laughs> <laughs> dice! <laughs> Come on! Take a chance. I roll the dice. Exhale. Roll the dice. And I look for an opening in her armor, or in her defense. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm up dialing into her pupils and I'm looking for every little twitch of her finger or twitch of her head and pop, pop. I'm gonna go for it. Fucking with fuck. With disadvantage. disadvantage. <gasps> no! With a natural 20! But 16? 16 misses. Oh. I need like, I need a. It goes by. A, Reaction. Left. She goes ahead immediately. <gasps> Like knocks it out of the side and goes for a knuckle punch right in mm. the center of your face. No. Uh, that's a natural twenty. No. The company no. come look at it. It's right. I believe you. It's oh. right there. The worst. The CR symbol. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. You got another hit. You got another hit. No. She's that's fucking be close. hitting me first. That's that gonna is. Be tough. That's it. I'm gonna. I'm no. I'm gonna just cancel the effect of the twenty, but the hit, the hit still happens. Okay. Wait, what'd you do? Make yeah. a slide of hand check. Oh, should I not? No, let do it. it. Do whatever you want. Whatever you do, do it. it. What'd you do? No, I thought about it. Now let's let this happen. This <gasps> such an invaluable lesson to be learned here. Actually, the more I think about it. <laughs> okay, it's ten points of bludgeoning damage to you. Oh, she's down. I'm out. And with that, dying. The final knuckle punch. This is. The room gets quiet as you hear the breath suddenly <gasps> fill the lungs of every creature watching in the room. And Bo kind of stumbles back. <laughs> Grin curls up in the face as one eye kind of closes, and then. I know you're, I know you're scared right now. <laughs> face know first into the gravel. I know the room erupts into cheers and, and laughter and drinks, whatever. The drow looks over and kind of walks over. Wobbles for a second. Oh, so two hit so points. Close to oh, two no! Hit points. No! <laughs> no! That is exactly I'm what happened. Up, that's exactly that's what happened that's in the it's current, current 2.0. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> um, I'm going to wake the two of them up really quick. Okay. Okay. As, as people are, are cheering, Walks I'm going to pull the diamond. <laughs> nine yeah. points for you, nine points for you. You're both. Roll a sleight of hand check. Okay. This is against the oh, monk's perception. At oh, advantage oh, with everybody going god. crazy? No, not this monk. Uh, it's 23, and it's gonna. I'm gonna fling, uh, sort of fling the diamond towards that goblin who saw it, but try to aim into the pocket of the guy standing next to him. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> it darts past the monk's. Not notice actually. Did not roll high enough perception. Uh, it goes and starts collecting the winnings and putting them into the pouches. Um, the the diamond zooms past the goblin's face goes, and sees where it went in the guy's pocket and goes, Hey, hey, what are you doing? And reaches into the pocket, and the uh, right next to next to it is this big orc you can see wearing, uh, looks like hide armor across the chest, a series of scars across each arm with like some kind of rickety looking tattoos on each forearm. Uh, and the goblin is like, What? 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 You want? Goblin's like, Give it back! And goes and pulls open the belt pouch, and you can see. Uh, but looks like a few chunks of dried meat tumble out, and the diamond <laughs> on the ground. And the orc goes, <laughs> and reaches down for it, and the goblin's like, no, he's mine! And the orc just goes, <laughs> grabs the goblin's arm, lifts him up off the ground, pries it from his fingers, and the goblin's like, ah! <laughs> Throws it down. Turns around, and you can see one of the, uh, one of the Korean warriors that's watching in the corner in full armor and helmet. Just looks right at the orc and goes. Mm. And the orc goes. 
and kind of sheepishly walks over towards the monk as she's collecting her winnings and hands Damn it to guards. her. You didn't even see it. Damn guards. Um, as the insanity dies down, Caduceus helps the rest, helps you up. The ogre gets up and is like. Like rubbing his crotch area, <laughs> seems to be like pressing the flesh to try and find out where one of the testicles may have been oh, locked upward yeah. in the body. Oh, yeah. uh, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, it's on a vision quest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's, it's already to Gordranus. It beat you there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everything kind of calms down a bit, and you you see where where is when you entered the room, there was that kind of. The glares of what the fuck is this human doing here and your activities as you enter didn't seem to improve that. When the fight is over, these same creatures and most everyone in the room just kind of gives you this like like a nod of respect. There's there, there's even though you didn't win the bout, there seems to be at least an appreciation of what you managed to accomplish. Wow. Fucking that's all I wanted. Um what the rest of you guys doing is as Bo and Jester, Jester as you walk by to help even, Jester up. Yeah. Oh, the ogre doesn't even approach either of you. He's he's extremely embarrassed by the display. Like Bat guano in my eye. Oh. And blood. You guys did really good. I fell first, you guys. Well, I mean, we kind of all knew that that was gonna happen. Sort of a little bit, yeah. Uh, oh, you almost won. Mm-hmm. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I need to get better at beating people's asses. Well, that's a good Nuanced, I like it. Yeah. There's the uh, kind of the squeak of wood on the stone floor of the establishment as a chair gets pushed up to the table, and uh, the drow uh, monk that you had just fought sits down at the table with you. Yeah. Yeah. This was all This is where this is all Um. Yeah. Yeah. I um, get the feeling that perhaps. There is more than meets the eye amongst you all. You don't smell of this land. Yeah, I'm feels... in... Sorry, you go ahead. I'm impressed. What do you want? I can see we're uh, cut from the same cloth. Where'd you train? Perhaps this is not the best place to talk. Um, come walk with me. Right. And the monk stands up and leaves the four corners. Mm. Wait Did a that minute. talk count as a short rest? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Is there one entrance and exit out of the four corner? One door? There is a back exit, um, but you watch as the monk leaves through the front. I'll head up further back. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. Wait for Jester. I'll cast Cure Wounds on you too. Oh, thank you. Hold on, that's at second level. Where are they leaving? That's Over there? They are exiting through the front door this way. Over there. Ford, you're going through this mm -hmm. exit, you said? 14 mm -hmm. points. And I'll wrap around. Yay, thank you. Okay. That is the Yasha best. goes ahead and joins you as well. That's at the back. Where is it? Oh, Egg. Oh. Egg. We're leaving, come Egg. on. What? I'm going to follow wherever you're Out going. The back door. What? Yeah. Well, okay. I'll, I'll go out the back door too. Yeah. I go out the oh front. yeah, that's nice. All right. As as both Jester and Bo leave, like a few of the patrons kind of raise a glass and <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the most polite <laughs> four quarters <laughs> combatant ever. <laughs> um, as you follow out the front, you can see the monk is kind of passing on the north road around the corner and make a perception check, Ford. Uh, eight. You back around the, side, the the back side of the building and you lose everyone. <laughs> You're like, uh, where, uh, where did they go? Yeah, I just pick a direction and start like kind of <laughs> jogging <laughs> again. again. Roll a new character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> on ceremonial's end. <laughs> Guys? Roll perception Guys? so low, he left the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm gonna wait just half a second and follow out the front door. Okay. Um, so I see her go around the corner. 
uh, to the east, you said? You do, actually. As you, as you leave and, and look out, you can see that she is about two blocks up the way and is kind of just leaning against the wall, looking over the shoulder <laughs> to see you exit. And as soon as you step out into the road, she goes. ducks into an alley. Okay. I. Um, do I get the sense if there's like the and the alley spills out the other side? They can't go up a block and then block around behind. Uh, it might. You haven't walked over in that area it's too true. much. I sure. Bring. What if she like you know just wants to make out with you or something? Do you think? I am I one... intruding? No. I mean, you can watch. Would that make you uncomfortable? <laughs> no. Anyway, it's kind of a joke. Okay. Yeah. Um. What if she's the spy? I think she might be. I think she might be. What if she thinks you are? Oh shit. And I she's thought about that too. Actually planning on killing you. Collecting mm, the bounty. Possible. We don't have a lot of health right now. We kind of took a beating. We didn't. You should definitely go by yourself. Waiting in an alleyway right now. But Literally you know waiting what? to murder me. She also took a beating. She did. And now it's two against the one and we sort of healed up a little bit, so she fuck her and we right can now. do it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about that too. And I think. Sure, other people are looking for this. She, look, she looks hurt enough to have been when she exited at two hit points. Let's, Let's go. go. All right. So who all's going with Bo? Yasha and you are at the back trying lost to just lost. I'm watching them. Just like I don't know what's happening. This is great. <laughs> so Caduceus and Ford and Yasha are tourists. I went. I went back back with them too. All right, yeah, and and not catches yeah. up. Where where are we going? <laughs> We're gonna catch up with um, with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can send a message if I know where which direction they are. So I'm gonna pick a direction. <laughs> Caleb, can you hear me? No. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's uh, uh, I will head towards the center of the, um, yeah. The Aurora, the Aurora hold? The tower. The bar? <laughs> Shit, we need a leader! <laughs> um, I think the ladies probably have it, but I'm going to do a little choo-choo train. I snap Frumpkin here, Frumpkin will follow them by 15 feet, and I will follow Frumpkin 15 back. Okay. The scowl's square, sorry. So it's looking for my note. And if we get to the corner and they go in, I'm just going to wait at the corner and Frumpkin will <clears throat> go around a little bit. Okay. So both of you follow into the alleyway and about Two buildings down to the left, there appears to be a storage shack of some kind, and you see the monk is standing with the door ajar, and just gives a nod to you, and then enters and closes the door behind. I turn around and make sure no one's following. No Perception one's following. check. Oh, fuck me. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, 22. 22. Uh, looking around, you see Caleb, you see Frumpkin, uh, but no one seems to be specifically following you, meaning you don't even know where the rest of your party is. Okay. I just give like a nod to Caleb and then go with Chester to the door. This is a this subway is a circle line, so we have to we may have, yeah, have to. I feel like we were supposed to be on the red. There's no beginning or end to it. Okay. It's the red checkered line. To sprint Frumpkin then up, uh, and he will climb up uh, Chester's back. Okay. Frumpkin perch comes up and perches around the back of your neck. Sprinkle seems very uncomfortable with this. Yeah. Kind of puffs up. Nugget also is not too fond of it. I'm more of a menagerie right now. <laughs> That's walking, <laughs> walking petting zoo. Where were they doing? Ridiculous. Pets, <laughs> Sitting off to the side with sure, Ford, sure. obviously. All right, you guys enter. I mean, it looks like a, a slightly larger outhouse. Um, and as the door opens, thankfully it's not an outhouse. Uh, the smell that gets to you is like like musty grains. Um, uh, but but since the, there aren't a lot of grain fields in the area, you're not sure what the smell's coming from. But there are a few like, kind of dried sacks, and one looks like the bottom is somewhat mildewing from maybe some moisture that may have gotten in from a nearby rain through the roof. Um, but the chamber is about 10 foot by 8 foot, and it's a very, very tight space. But in the back corner, you see the drow, arms crossed, kind of looking at you expectantly. Did you call us here to give us back the diamond that we gave you? Because that's Close very kind of you. Okay. <laughs> you close the door. Uh, it is uh, dark. You can't see anything, Bo. Put the goggles on. You see the monk reaches into the pouch and tosses the diamond back to you. Oh, oh. Oh. Say what? Best fight ever. 
You watch as the image of the monk shifts and fades, oh, and what you see is a, a female elf, dark skin, no hair, pointed ears, and the familiar blue and gray outfit of the monks of the Cobalt Fucking Soul. It's Dyrus! It's Dyrus! Shit! She looks at you and goes, I fucking knew it. The fact that you're this far, it does not bode well. I am extremely curious just how you happen to. Just go up and give her a big hug. <clears throat> just a hug. <laughs> yes. I thought you were dead. She's been looking for you. <laughs> we're injured in Blade Garden. I hadn't heard from you. Yeah, that was this. It was a story. To tell <gasps> I sent you a message. I do know. you remember? I do remember. <laughs> The point was to not have you follow me east. But here we are. So, at the very least, let us go ahead and compare notes. Oh my goodness. And that's where we're going to go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, that open. is so close. Oh, man. You guys, we didn't lose the diamond. <laughs> that's the most important. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. And once again, years later, damage dice makes all the difference. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what happened in the quick fight. <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. Thing that happened. This was Kern 2.0, straight up. I yeah. was rolling straight. d8s, and then at some point, I looked down and I had d6s in my hand. I watched you roll d6s that whole yeah. time. Like a d- yeah. decent yeah. amount of time. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, wait, how long have I been rolling yeah. d6s? Too like, long. I think. Wait, Spotlight. Wait. Subconsciously, all. something in the back of Bo's mind was causing her to. Draw the pull the punches oh. a little bit. Oh. 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 Trying to Sexy. narratively make it work. Um, this is our magic. But we'll we'll pick up on this reunion oh next week and, uh, and see those fucking dope fights. The scenarios yes. working around it. Um, oh. But uh, until then, we're gonna go ahead and get some rest. Uh, don't forget, guys. We just also announced we're gonna be at Denver Comic Con. Oh, Denver yeah. Comic Con. So for folks in the Denver area or are looking to travel to there for that convention. We'll be there, so come say hi. We got panels and signings and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so hopefully see you there. Um, other than that, Monday, oh, yeah. Monday, the Kickstarter drops for Pacific. Legends of Vox Machina. You cannot be prepared. A, we have a Q and A happening on our channel that night yep, 7 at PM. seven p.m. To discuss with you three uh-huh. to just yeah, all the questions. Talk uh, yeah, about do the, the quads and, and everything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, some fun stuff, guys. Some fun stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. We love you very much, and is it Thursday yet? Yay! Good night. Yay!